Hello everyone and welcome to Scardcast. This is the new release, the Forge World book, the Space Wolves supplement, and the Death Watch supplement pre-release video. Get excited, sit back, it's going to be a marathon stuff. And it's going to be amazing. So thanks for tuning in. Let's dive into the books. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Skari, your grateful host. And today we're talking... Whoa! Let's make sure the camera doesn't go everywhere. <laughs> we're talking Death Watch. Yay! We're talking Compendium Forge World stuff. Yay! And we're talking Space Wolves. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, Games Workshop, for sending these down. I'm really excited to kind of show these off and, uh, you know, kind of talk about what has happened in, um, in these. There's so many crazy things, so many cool things. I was uh, up very late last night watching them. I mean, re watching them. Reading all of this stuff last night. And uh, considering they show... <laughs> They showed up relatively late at my house. Um, thank you very much, coronavirus, because it was everywhere. So i um, very excited to kind of show these off. Saturday, the 31st. Which one do you want to see first? Doug Tabor asks, is the Reaper still good? Well, it is, uh, let's, let's dive in, shall we? Let's take a look. Do I have the Forge World one? You mean the first one that we're going to be looking at? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. I'm uh, looking forward to showing, showing that one off as well. So I guess we'll put these up here somewhere so people can see that we got them. Yeah. And we'll kind of take a look at those as we go. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, things like that, you want me to discuss anything specifically, feel free to shoot me a line. Oh my goodness, these books are being annoying. Okay, there we go. I just don't want them to go everywhere. Also, have a cup of coffee. Forge roll, please, says Phase Adept. Colin, hello. Are Space Marine Leviathans still broken? Oh, so many. Great, great questions. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We are live on uh, multiple platforms, so this is super fun. Okay, so let's dive in. Let's dive into to this stuff as well. Where are you? You want to be? Oh, you want to be something like that? Yeah, there we go. Cool. So you can see my face. My face is the pretty one. Oh. Now I really like the aesthetic that they're going for here with like. All of the uh, the book itself is gorgeous. I really enjoy the, like cool looking books. Uh, they'd already shown off the table of contents with um, with everything. Good morning, Pete from uh, Michigan. Good morning, Snevar Peterson. Wondering if Custodes unit changed a lot since they are so essentially so essential to the faction. Mm. Well, that's what we're checking. We are going over everything, from core keywords to everything. Um, okay, so first and foremost, the the layout of the book is really good. Oh, the layout of the book is really good, and uh, something that I'm really excited about. And uh, <clears throat> we've got all of this stuff happening here. We've got. Um, uh, you've got like the chapters and stuff in there. Now they, with a lot of these Forge World chapters, they give you like a example and say we recommend that you use these chapter tactics and things. Do you have to use those chapter tactics? No, it just says we recommend. So sure, why not? Uh, hopefully you can show the Drukari stuff. Oh man, when we get to the Drukari stuff. Oh. <laughs> the hive mind stirs with eager adaptations. That's true. Good morning, Oliver. Good morning, everybody. Love how Canadians are the only non-Scandinavian country can pronounce Icelandic names. Uh, that might just be myself, but sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Good morning, Lord of Nords. Good morning, my mare 82. Good morning, Kieron Saunders. Uh, 
If they have taken the Battlesuit keyword off the town, I will cry. That's true. Hey, Skari, I'm well, thank you. Good morning, good morning. It's okay, it's okay. All right, so characters themselves, Carab, Cassius, Luft, Armenian, Valtech, like all those special characters, they just kind of changed the keywords on the auras. Things like, uh, you know, giving them angels of death, giving them, um, if they have, like, rights of battle, gives them the rights of battle stuff, uh... Gabriel Angelus, for example, has the chapter master keyword, and he like leaps into the fray, which is something from this, the, uh, the 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 games, which is just interesting. However, what what I did mainly is I went through, and I kind of looked up at all the. It's early, says James Gallego. It is early. It's uh, six a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, IP Curie. What's going on? Um, so you have like all of this stuff. Um, yeah, so a lot of people have been looking. Okay, so what are the main ones? You've got the Derrideo Dreadnought. You have the Relic Contempt Dreadnought. And you have the Leviathan Dreadnought. Those are the main ones that are really sort of like uh, the main ones. And then you've got like some of the Sakaran stuff or whatever. Well, let's, let's start... Let's start point cost, shall we? Let's quickly just kind of go over some of the points here. Um, so the Leviathan Dreadnought did see, and that's probably the biggest one, some of the biggest changes in the Space Marine range. In terms of points, it's 220 points and 10 points for each Storm Cannon and 5 points for a Hunter Killer Missile. Now, before you freak out, it has, it has suffered a couple of very, very... Um, uh, it you know it suffered a couple of differences. Number one, dreadnought is ballistic skill weapon skill three. The 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 the, the uh, Leviathan dreadnought. It's also only toughness seven now, and it has also gone down to a five plus invulnerable save. So three very major changes to the Leviathan dreadnought. It also lost core, and all of the stuff that used to be relic, right? Um. Like, uh, has something called Legacy, Martial Legacy. If you add it into a detachment, that detachment costs an additional command point. So that means that, you know, if you... Um, so uh, they're still very good. They're only, like... So a fully kitted out Leviathan with the, stu the two Storm Cannon Arrays is 240 points. And then 300 Killer Missiles is 200 and... 45 points right so you know it's like 250 points for like a dreadnought it still has 14 wounds t7 they have the um um duty eternal from the space ring codex that uh minus one damage so that's just built into them as well which i think is really good too i want to know about grot tanks grot mega tanks and yeah we'll talk about orcs in a second absolutely Serap tech stats, we'll get to the Necrons, so sit tight, we're going to talk about all that stuff. So the Relic Contempted Dreadnought, another very popular style Dreadnought, with the double last cannons, it is um, 190 points still, or like around that, that point level, and now it hits on threes. So a lot of these uh, like stuff that used to hit like crazy good, now hits on threes, it's like a standard. And I think that's probably one of the biggest changes I see is, um, hey, Tegas, hey, Stefan, um, hello, everybody. So that's the biggest thing I noticed. A lot of the stuff is just like, like it's not hitting on twos now and stuff like that, so so that's a big deal. And then the other one that gets a lot of uh, attention is the Whirlwind Scorpius. And the Whirlwind Scorpius lost its ability to fire twice. It's only 170 points now, and its weapon is still pretty good. You know, it's 3d3 shots, still strength 6, minus 2, 2 damage, whatever, 48 inches. Um, however, it doesn't have the ability to shoot twice anymore, right? And I think that's going to be a big difference as well. Um, and it does, doesn't have the Whirlwind keyword either it is a, it is a legacy unit though so to put it in you have to pay extra command points to put in this thing our storm cannon still heavy 10 so storm cannons for the leviathan dreadnought are now heavy eight strength seven minus one two damage 36 inch range and the leviathan dreadnought 
in the Chaos Space Ring Codex has this same exact weapon. So they kind of kept a lot of the weapons the same between both Chaos and Space Rings instead of like confusing a bunch of people and doing that as well. So Chaos one's the same. Excite. Yeah. Mm -mm. Been waiting 658. Oh, I know, Stefan. Sorry. I totally, the time difference. I woke up and I was like, oh no, I'm late. But apparently 10 a.m is 6 a.m., not 5 a.m. now because of the summer change in time. Good morning, Kalith. Um, I haven't spoken about the Derrideo yet. So the Derrideo itself, also now, Web of Skill Blizzard 3, it's 12 wounds, has a bunch of different options. Um, it has a 5-up and bumble save now. And it has... Um, uh, it has like a bunch of different defense missiles and stuff like that. Now, something else is really cool. Is anything that's like anti-air, that's like that kills aircraft. Every time it shoots into aircraft, it turns from D6 damage to D3 plus 3 damage. So things like, you know, air missiles. Some of the flyers have like specific anti-tank missiles as well, etc. There was a couple of the the dread the land raiders that had a five up invulnerable save. Five up invulnerable save on land raiders. Sure. Um, now, the Terex drill, pretty interesting. Uh, uh, you'll notice what happened to the drills. We'll get to them. Uh, most people use them in Admech or Chaos, so we'll talk about them there. Um, and things like Stormy Old Gunships and Fire Raptors, like, they, you know, even like the Astrius, it's not, they're not terrible. Like, they're pointed a lot better in the sense that you can, like, they're not crazy overcosted anymore. However, they did change some of their, like, like how they hit and things like that as well. Uh, Grey Knights have a Land Raider and a Thunderhawk. Sure, if you want a Land Raider that has Psy Cannons, sure. It's, uh, like, 300 points. Meh. Yeah. If you want a cool Land Raider, sure. Sounds exciting. I'm always happy that Chinork is gone. I can't hang with that kind of anti-air firepower. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. IP Curie, hello. Thanks for doing this every release. No problem, Anian. Thank you for tuning in. Olive, Oliver Page, have missed Hellforged Leviathan Dreads? No, they're, they're coming up. <laughs> Everybody's like, I need to know about my Leviathans. I need to know about my World of Scorpius. I need to know about my Terex drill. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Did the quad heavy bolters on the fire wrap to get the improvement? Um, since we're talking about space rings, so yeah, well, they got the like all the new weapons are like new weapons, right? So anything that's uh, that's got that like any heavy bolter went to two damage, um, things like that. The fire raptor twin, uh, heavy bolter, yeah, quad heavy bolter is heavy twelve. It's two damage minus one, and the fire raptor gunship is not actually that expensive points wise. In my opinion, a fire raptor gunship is uh, three hundred and four hundred points with the quad heavy bolters. So, is it worth it? You be the judge of that. So then we have the Astro Militarum data sheets. They added a whole thing on the Death Corps of Krieg. You know who doesn't love the Death Corps of Krieg? Who doesn't? They're fantastic. I haven't gone through any of the Chaos stuff yet. I will get there. We will get there. Need to know about my Chaos Cerberus Super Heavy Tank Destroyer. Not Leviathan. <laughs> Are you doing characters? Want to know about Salamander's Bryas Mental. Hey, Damien Spearman. Thank you for the super chat. Really appreciate it on, over on, uh, on YouTube. Thank you. I woke up early for this. So I appreciate that. <laughs> um... Salamander Briar's Mantle. Uh, know, from whom? Who has that? Who has that? I don't know who that is. Mm, are they, do they have a Salamander? Red Scorpion, Red Scorpion, Blood Ravens, Minotaurs, Minotaurs. Uh, Char Charidons, Red Scorpion. Oh, here we go. Brith. Ash Mantle. Ash Mantle. He has a. He's basically a Dreadnought. Right? Salamander Dreadnought. Wrought by Vulcan, 5-up invulnerable save, and a 5-up feel no pain. He has a super heavy flamer, a dreadfire claw, which is a 4-damage claw. 
Uh, he has a 3-inch 2D6 pistol. And that's Heavy Flamer. Sure. And he just has uh, an explode thing. He's just like a dreadnought. Nothing crazy. He just has a 5-up pinball, 5-up feeling pain. And, uh, yep. And that's that. He's a character dreadnought. Yavara 12-inch Flamer, Demonic Teddy. We'll get to that. Yeah, absolutely. The Yavara was one of those that I also made sure that I took a little note of. Toughness on Briarth? Uh, I think he's tough to 7, like any Dreadnought. Seems like they, they stopped. Yeah, he's T7. He's strength 8 plus times 2, so strength, strength 16. Then he does hit on 2s, wound on 2s. But let's move on to the Dreadnought. Uh, Flamer's still 3 damage. Duty Eternal. Core? <laughs> I don't think any of them are like characters are not core. Like these are all characters. None of the Leviathan dreadnoughts got core keyword. Uh, the Contemptor, the Relic Contemptor dreadnoughts, I don't believe got core either. Um, neither did a lot of these Sakarans or the Land Raiders, things like that, um, either. Oh no, the Relic Contemptor did keep core, so that one's core. But the Derideo and the Leviathan, Leviathan did not keep core. Mm -mm. Did the four drill chapters get a super doc? No. And good night, four drill dreadnoughts. <laughs> Matthew Carney, thank you. Yeah, the Fire Raptor did get a lot cheaper. So, Death Corps of Krieg, you've got like a, nothing crazy. It's basically a Death Corp Krieg commander. Uh, the Death Riders, and uh, Death Rider Command Squad. I like the Death Riders. They're. They are like the Death Riders themselves with three wounds with a four up save, and they have a five up feel no pain. So I don't know if that was like a normal thing, but I like that. I like that a lot. They're cavalry that has three wounds, kind of like the the Cerberus Raiders and stuff like that from Adeptus Mechanicus, except in a guard unit. And the Death Rider Squadron does go up to 10 Death Riders for like 15 points a pop. So they're relatively cheap. And their Hunting Lance is minus 3 and 2 damage when they charge. They only have... The bad. Th the sad thing is they have like very few attacks, which is a shad. Shad. And they can outflank. So they, you know, they Like, I've heard that people really enjoy the Death Riders. I've never actually seen like a Death Rider army as well. Ah, the Dark Chin. Thank you. I've been growing this for a while now. Apparently, I made people vote on Instagram about it. And I was like, do I keep it? Do I cut it off? Good morning, Poison Biscuits. <laughs> uh, did the Telemon survive or is he dead? The Telemon. Ah, we'll get, we'll get to that, Kinky. We'll get to that. Damien Spearman, just get rid of my disdain for Marines. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Someone with two Talmans, I hope he's still okay. About Minotaur chapter rules. So Juan Parejo, what they did is they said, as a Minotaur, we recommend that you use these successor rules, basically. So they did that with all the chapters. We recommend that you use the Imperial Fist successor rules, basically. But it's recommended, so you can pretty much use whatever you want. Uh, cool. So then things like the Cyclops thing, I've seen some of those. Eh, they're about the same. They, they can embark in transports again, but they can't explode on a turn. They disembark from a transport. Fair enough. Um, all the Malkadors and the quad launchers and stuff like that. The bombards, the rapiers. They, they, they like most things. I think at the moment, the way that these are going to affect the guard army is going to depend greatly on like Psychic Awakening Stratagems, if that makes any sense. The Vulture Gunship is about the same, and the Vendetta Gunship is kind of cool. It's like, yeah, it's like, like in terms of points costs, they're about the same as they were before, as well as the Marauder, the Macarius, the Trojan. I really like the Trojan support vehicle. Instead of, like, making a vehicle hit, it makes, if it repairs a vehicle, it can... Also make it replenish one-shot weapons. So if you do it on like a death strike missile, then the death strike missile can like shoot again. <laughs> so that's really funny. They can do it on every vehicle. So I don't know if there's any play with that, but that just that just made me laugh. I'm like, that's funny. 
replenishing one shot weapons. Hilarious. Um, but it's the way it's written, it seems like it has to repair it in order to replenish it. So if it doesn't have to repair it, then, you know, whatever that is. Crassus Minotaur, Marauder Bomber, Destroyers, the Tarantula Battery. You know, in terms of point costs, I think the biggest one is like the Vendetta and stuff like that were like original weapons. Uh, the Vendetta is like 200 points and the Vulture is 180 Right with the galling cannon, like 190. So, like flyers, pretty, pretty expensive still. Does the vulture have Punisher cannons? No, it has one, one cannon. Like it's just still one weapon. Mm -mm. Admech just have three units. I'd love to find out the point of the drill when not Secutari got Forge World. Absolutely, Volt. We'll get to them in a second. Uh, did the Forger Chapter Master keep the Marine Rules from the New Codex? Do you have to pay the 40 points? Uh, the Chapter Masters, they are just built in to their point cost, basically. You can fire the Death Strike twice? What? Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, what? That's crazy. Crazy. Uh, the Inquisitors are interesting. Now, something else you notice in this book is any named character, right? I'm not sure it's in this one, too. Yeah. Uh, keyword, yeah, so something that is really weird to me is the fact that they, they have this thing called uh, named characters or whatever. If you choose to make any of the named characters from this book to get a warlord trait, and that means any named character pretty much from like any of these, especially in the imperial side, they have to take the inspiring leader warlord trait from the core rule book, which is the weirdest thing. Which means if you want to take like any of these inquisitors, your warlord, or any of the really cool like space ring characters, your warlord, they have to take the inspiring warlord trait if they're a named character. I find that very weird. I don't know about you, but that's like, <laughs> why? <laughs> why? Why would you do that? Why not just let you pick a warlord trait or assign them a warlord trait from the codex? <laughs> anyway, that was like, I was like, what? I was reading that. I was like, that is like the silliest warlord trait. You know, at least in 8th edition, you had like a lit, like three different warlord traits from the core rulebook that you could pick. But having to take inspiring leader, everybody around you gets plus one leadership. That's absolute poop. <laughs> Poop. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm. Yeah, so that's um, uh, Land Raider Achilles, still T8, 19 wounds, 4 plus plus. The Achilles is a 5 plus plus. I uh, still T8, and I think it's um, I'll, uh, the Achilles. Where is he? We were talking about the Space Marines. Uh, uh, Achilles, where are you? Where are you, Achilles? Achilles. I the Achilles is probably one of the most expensive ones, to be honest. Because it just is. Land Raider Achilles. Where are ya? Oh there you are. It was actually one of the first ones, which is really funny. Uh sixteen wounds, T eight, and a five up invulnerable save. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they have the Inquisitors. It's fun, you know. They're, it's nice because they get all the keywords for the Inquisitors, so there's no gray area of whether or not they can be added in as like an Inquisitor, that sort of thing. Still waiting for a Drukari load of war option. What have I missed so far? The Vex? Uh, space Marine stuff. <laughs> so sad they didn't take the opportunity to get 40k rules for more of the Mechanicus models. That is also true. Hector Rex loses Psychic Mastery? Sure. He has, uh, he can deny two powers, and he can cast two powers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he ignores mortal wounds on a five plus. So, there's only the two of them in here, though. Solomon and Hector Rex. But they're really cheap. It's like 100 points and 75 points. Like, why wouldn't you? Then we have Custodes. Now, this is one that a lot of you have been waiting for. Custodes. Um... They do get the shield host keyword in a lot of them so that they, you can kind of 
pick them in and max them into like a a a, um, a uh, shield host. So in terms of the like, these are the troop choices. They're like fifty and fifty five points each, you know, plus their upgrades and whatnot. Um, I'm not a super custodian player, so I can't really tell you exactly what happens. However, um, you know, I think one of the biggest things that we've all seen is the Telamon Heavy Dreadnought, which is sort of, um, you know, is it viable? Is it not viable? That sort of stuff. So first and foremost, it isn't, it doesn't have the core keyword, right? Whereas the things like the Aqualon Custodians, uh, the Galate, the Galatus Dreadnought do have core, the Custodians and the Achilles Dreadnought, they have the core keyword, for example. So you can tell that they're going to be bringing in that core keyword mechanic into the book at some point as well. How the Venetari, um, whereas the Venetari Custodians are indeed core, um, they have their crazy lance shooting and stuff like that. But let's talk a little about point values, shall we? So the Telamon Dreadnought is 260 points. And we've got the Arachnus Storm Cannon, which is uh, uh, the Storm Cannon is 15 extra points, basically, if you want the Storm Cannon. So you're looking at 175 points for the Telamon. And he has his 4-up invulnerable save. He um, has minus 1 damage just built right into his stats as a Guardian Eternal. And um, he has Unyielding Ancient, so he still has a 6-up Feel No Pain as well from the Venerable Dreadnought, basically. Which I think is really good. So is he still good? Yes, Spiculus Bolter is still good. However, the Spiculus Bolt Launcher, basically, if it stays still, it shoots 10 Head goes to heavy ten. Don't know if that's like a that's like a thing that it used to be able to do, but it's less than three hundred points. I have a question. Once you get to the orcs, then woo new content and new rules. Kyle, absolutely, Mister Gearguts Mech Shop, joining the chat. Uh, the Telamon is uh, fourteen wounds, and the Custodian Guard, I believe, are they're three wounds. They're just like normal. Just three normal. They can have like misericordias and stuff. And then of course the uh, where is it? The Caladius Grav Tank. So it did lose its minus two to charge bubble, which is about expected, considering uh, yes, the Telamon is still toughness eight. Um, it's still like it lost that. It still flies though. So even though a lot of the Space Marine stuff lost fly, like the Caladius Graf Tank has kept its fly, and it's still 220 points or something like that. 225 points, basically, for whatever style you want to build it. It's still Strength 7 for its uh, uh, Accelerator Cannon, minus 3, 2 damage. So, still pretty decent. Has a 5-up invul save. And then, of course, <laughs> the air. I just want to talk about the Ares Gunship. Why not? Because it caused so much controversy, like, two weeks ago. Um, um, yeah, there's no change. Yeah, no problem. The Ares gunship is now um, 450 points. Not, I don't know if that changed or anything, but it's 22 wounds. Has, uh, yeah, it's giant. It's not core, though. So, do you look through the Eldar stuff yet? I have not. I have not. So, make sure you get your coffee and we go through this as well. Mm hmm. Mm -mm. Oh, excuse me. Then we have the Adeptus Mechanicus. So, number one, Hoplites and the other ones do not get the normal Admech keyword thing. They get the Titan Legion keyword, which is the same as it was before. However, they do have rules now for Titan Legions, or they're adding those in to here. Like, you actually have, like, a Titan Legion thing. Um... Damage on the Aqualon Fists. We'll get to that in a second. And then we'll talk about the Terex Drill. Ooh, everybody wants to know about the Terex Drill. 
That was a great question. It says Venatari pistols. I have no idea what the uh, what the what it is, but the Venatari pistols are 18 inch pistol two, strength six, minus two, two damage, and an unmodified hit roll of a six is an additional hit. So they're like Tesla kinetic destroyer pistols. The buckler um, makes the makes them a two plus save. So it gives them a two up save. And the Tarsus Buckler is a melee weapon. It's plus one, minus two, one damage. And the Lance is two damage, minus three, plus one. If you do that. Hopefully that answers your question. The Aqualon Fists. Aqualon Power Gauntlet, I'm assuming, is what you're going for. Or two damage. Minus four times two strength, two damage. So strength ten, minus four, two damage. The Leviathan, we went through that tour, but yes, the Leviathan has indeed taken a bit of a hit. Is the Eris Ballistic Skill 2? Uh, yes. Yes, of course. It's, it's a Custodes. Have the Secretary Peltas gun profiles changed at all? So, we're talking about the Hoplites. Um, they didn't gain the... Um, like, they can still be put into a Admech army without taking away like all your special Admech rules, which is about right. However... They um, are did not gain the keyword, so they're just they're just infantry, Skitari, Titan Legion, Adeptus Mechanicus. Um, in terms of them, they still have a bounce back force field that like uh, you know does. Um, is this it here? Yeah, the Mag Inverter Shield, so you can bounce back more wounds of people, and they do D three damage against vehicles instead of one damage in shooting and in close combat. So pretty standard stuff there. Then we have the. Secutari Peltists. Uh, they have um, a gun. It's an 18 inch assault 3 gun. It's like a bolter. Or a 24 heavy 1 strength 5 minus 2 one, like damage 1 weapon. So, with a 5 plus invulnerable save. And they can give themselves a minus 1 to hit. Basically. Once per game. So that you it's hard to hit them. Sure. Yeah. So that makes that makes sense. The light, <laughs> Valerie says the light makes it unreadable for us. Hmm, I might not want any sort of copyright infringement. <laughs> it might be it might be something well well calculated, Valerie. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Now, Terex pattern drill. Okay, who's excited? Click a like down below for the Terax Pattern Drill and uh, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff because if you'd like to support me, I'm on Patreon, so the links are down below. And I do this for all the releases. If you'd like to support the content that I do, then please do. I'd really appreciate that as well. Um, so the Terax Pattern Drill did change. Um, so it does come at a cost. So, yes, the point value went up, and we'll get to that in a second. Hey, Tarzan, what's going on? You missed all the Space Marine stuff <laughs> and the Grey Knight stuff and the Custody stuff. Uh, but the Terax Pattern Drill, two things. Number one, the Melter Cutter, right, is a heavy five Melter Gun now. So instead of, like, D3 shots for its Melter Cutter, it's just heavy five. So it got a huge boost on its Melter Gun. Which I think is really cool. It's a 12-inch melter gun, but it's f five shots now, which is big. And then the termite, the the volkite charger. If you decide to do that, have two damage each or whatever, which is fine. Uh, the heavy flamers are heavy flamers, and the drill is a melee weapon, which is now D3 instead of having the crazy like it does mortal wounds as you like take damage or whatever. Because before, if you didn't die, you rolled a dice and you basically took mortal wounds as it like cut you up or whatever now it's just d3 plus three damage so it has three attacks right it hits on fours in close combat it's minus four strength 14 and it's d3 plus three damage except against a vehicle it's d3 plus six damage awesome like that little drill is just like a little missile that you throw at vehicles and stuff and will murder some stuff in close combat. Plus, it's considering its melter is now five shots, makes that melter gun like 
crazy reliable, right? However, it does come at a cost. And sadly, that cost is 50 points. So the drill is 180 points. Steep price to pay. Is it still good? I think so. I think it is. It is still toughness 8. It still has a 3-up save. It is now 14 wounds. Not 10 wounds. 14 wounds. Right? Which is awesome. And it can still carry 12 models. So to recap, the Terax pattern drill, and this is with most drills, went from 10 wounds to 14 wounds, has a very efficient melter gun, has a very efficient drill in close combat, still carries 12 models, and it went up 50 points, right? So it went up almost twice, and it went up like, and it's still T8. So in my opinion, I think the drill actually did really awesome. It is still T8, 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 spread it far and wide, to everyone, okay, it's all T8, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. I think, I think the biggest win for it is the 14 wounds, which makes it like a land raider, basically. But it's 180 points, and it has a 5-shot melt gun. What? What? I, would you pay 50 points extra to give it 4 extra wounds and better guns and better close combat? I think so. So... I don't think they're going anywhere. And I, I love drills. I think they're great. So in my opinion, fantastic. As for the hoplites and stuff, are you ever going to see them? Only if you're Koska. Hi, Koska. Love you, buddy. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, my mans. It is an early stream. That's because we got, we got stuff to go through and things to talk about. Because everybody knows exactly what they're excited about. Imperial Knights. Cool. Uh, you've got your Quest or Allegiance. You've got your Free Blades and Household stuff that you want to put in there. The War Gear just says, look at Chaos uh, Codex Knights. Um, you know, sorry to all your Knight fans out there. I'm not exactly the best like Knight person, etc., etc. You don't have time to drink water. Hey, first of all, this isn't water. This is coffee. Second of all, you've interrupted my flow. So now I've gone on a tangent. I hope you are happy. Now you have to wait just a little longer before I turn the page. Mm. 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 Uh, how's the Space Marine Astreus? Yeah, we'll go back to the Astreus real quick. Uh, by the way, same thing for the Terax pattern drill in the Space Marines. Because it can be a chapter thing too, which is kind of cool. You can make it a chapter thing. Wow. So the Astreus... Where's the Astreus? First of all, the Astreus is like... Mm, where it's Stormbird, Mastodon, Thunderhawk gunship. Who the heck plays a Thunderhawk gunship? So the Astreus is about the same as it was before. It hits on threes instead of twos now. Or I don't know if it always did two. And the way the Void Shields change, the Void Shields are different now. So Void Shields are basically... You can take, it's got like a 5-up save, but it's um, it's per damage. So you have two Void Shields that are worth, that are three Void Shields each, and each one basically soaks up like a full damage. So if you shoot a last cannon at a Astreus, the Void Shield, and you roll six damage, it'll take six damage, it'll just knock the Void Shield out right? Um, but if you take like heavy bolter shots, oh no, I mean like bolter shots and do three damage, it'll like, it'll take three of the damage on a void shield. It has six of these void shield points basically. And then you can start doing damage to the Astros. So I kind of like the way that that works. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, as for points, uh, it's about um, 675 points. If you want to put the twin last cannons, it's like over 700 points. Uh, a lot of these super heavies became a lot cheaper, so easier to sort of field if you want to field them. Conman Chronicles says, show us about the Grey Knights, please. Curious what a Land Raider Banisher is. It's a Land Raider with Psy Cannons as guns instead of last Cannons. And that's pretty much all it does. <laughs> Waiting for Tau Miracle. 
You're not alone. Hey, Skari, not sure if you already saw them. Any to think for the Inquisitors? They got cheaper, and you can actually use them. So, uh, because they got all the relevant keywords from the Inquisitor book. Xeno section is later in the book. Did I miss the Telemon? Yes, you did. However, it hasn't really changed too much. The Telemon's still about the same. Is it a twin Psy Cannon or a heavy one? Um, I believe it's a twin. No, it's a heavy. It's like a heavier version of the Psy Cannon, to be honest. I think that was what it was. Mm -hmm. Astra Militarum. Astra Mil Who is excited about... I know I'm going on a tangent here. I just really want to make sure everybody kind of gets some, gets some of the stuff that they love. And uh -huh, where is the Grey Knights? There they are. Ha ha. Okay. It is a twin side cannon. So six shots at 24 inches. So it's not like a heavier side cannon. It's a twin side cannon. Rename Voltamere Land Raider. Shame. Hopefully the Banisher would be something special. If you have a chance to go back, can you give the new Grav Bombard and Meltalance profiles and costs? So, the cost of the Meltalance and stuff like that, uh, the Grav Bombard did actually change. Like, with, um, if you're looking at um, the Leviathan Dreadnought stuff, they did change, actually. And so, the Grav Bombard Flux is, is 24 inches, 2d3 shots, but um, it's like. It's two damage and then becomes like three damage against anything. It's like the new like grab weapons. Strength eight minus three, basically three damage, and it's heavy two d three for each grab flux bombard. Basically, it's nothing crazy. The melter lance profile, um, it's heavy d six, strength nine, minus four d six damage, and it's a melter. So if it's within half range, it's d six plus two damage. Now, does it the point value change much? Eh, we'll see. I don't know. Like most people take it with the with the other weapons, right? But if you have the um <laughs> Where are you? Leviathan Dreadnought. The Meltalance is twenty points. The Hunter and the, the Storm Cannon is ten points. So the Grav Bombard just comes with it, basically. It comes equipped with a Grav Bombard for free. So it's like the cheap one of the cheaper options to run it as well. Okay, so the Knight Lancer, um, minus one to hit if you hit it from with Titanic stuff because of its big shield. It's got super heavy walkers stuff. We'll go into the Moriax. I think Moriaxes are some of the ones that people are more excited about, right? Yeah, the Lightning Strike Fire is still in there. Good morning. Jake, how are you? The drill was three attacks. Vault. It was three attacks. How's the Tesseract art looking? We'll get to the Necrons in a second. Thank you for your patience. Has the Cyclops demo tank been on? Yes, it has. It's uh, almost the same, except it can go into transports again. You just can't detonate it on a turn in which it disembarks, basically. Yeah, I heard, uh, you know, Knight Moriaxes, right? Is that like what everybody's excited about? But look at that, an entire page of rules for them. <laughs> They can have up to three of them in a unit. Uh, they have the Graviton Pulsars, heavy D6. Uh, basically, like the new Grav rules. So if it's a save of three plus, it becomes from damage two to damage three. You have the Conversion Beam. They're all blast weapons. Um, Rad Cleanser. It's nine inches range, three damage. Uh, always wounds on twos. Unless it's uh, unless you're shooting at a target, a vehicle, or Titanic, a um, siege claw, d6 damage. If you target a Titanic or vehicle, you it's plus two to the damage. Interesting. And they have protective protocols. While they're within six inches of any friendly household Titanic models, you can heroic intervene. Six inches, basically. Cool. So you can still heroically intervene into there and stuff like that. Seems pretty decent. However, what are the point costs of these? Look at all these titans. Isn't that cool? Moriaxes are 155 points. And if you want a beam cannon, it's 10 points. So basically, 155 points per little Moriax guy. Sure. So it's just a rebranding. I was hoping for a new variant. No, it's just a rebranding. 
Mm. M. Chin, thank you for tuning in and watching. Really appreciate it. No Astro Militarum Regimental rules in this book, right? Just for Death Corpse of Creek. They got a regimental rule. Uh, when a vehicle or character dies on a 4+, plus, they get to shoot with a weapon, basically, or attack in close combat. So that's really neat. I like that. Um, Ola from New Zealand. Hi, Dan. What's going on? Thanks for doing this, Skari. Could you check the stats on the Grey Knight Land Raider side cannons? It's just a double side cannon. It's the exact same as a normal side cannon, but double. So two damage, strength seven. Six shots instead of three. Um, they got a, they're got they two damage based, though. Let's you shoot or attack when you die on a four plus. Exactly. Skitar stri Strix, any good now? The Questora Styrix. So the Styrix themselves is a just a big knight that has a Reaper Chain Sword and a Volkite Cheroville. So that's a heavy five D six damage uh, weapon. Cool. The Siege Claw is still 3 damage or 6 damage. And add plus 2 the damage if you hit a vehicle monster. So it's 8 damage against vehicles or monsters with the Crush. Mm, ouch. Um, you, don't, you don't get cover against the Styrix. Just no benefits of cover. Because apparently it will murder you. <laughs> Interesting. And of course the Porphyrion, which I'm terrified of. The fact that I had the six damage weapons used to kill my Venoms in like two seconds. Be like, pop, Venom. Pop, pop, Venom, Venom. Pop, pop, pop. Uh, any new stats uh, for Astro Matarum? Eh, they're about the same. I just, uh, they just got like a rebranding. Are the Aquilons last from Bolt still one damage? The Sajami Bolt Caliber still will damage? Yes. <laughs> no cover or, or no saving on cover. No bonus of cover. So no minus one to hit, nothing like that. You have not missed the Dark Eldar section, my good sir. So, Titan Legions. Um, you know, can't really use them in, like, rally games. But Warhound Titans, 2,000 points still. Pretty cool. They did change the Void Shields, the same as, like, the Astrius. So, anything with Void Shields has that sort of Void Shield now. Reva Titan, Nemesis Titan, they're still, like, up in the thousands of points. And the Warlord Titan, he has uh, eight Void Shields. Oh, my God. And he has 120 wounds. What? <laughs> That's not going to die anytime soon. Eight void shields? That's nuts. Nuts. He's 5,500 points. Sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, Paul Hodges. Hey, Paul Hodges. How are you? You're a legend. Ah, oh, thank you. Have you checked me out on Patreon yet? <laughs> Cheeky Ed, are the Aquilon... Oh, yeah, we already answered that question. I want to see the Eldar. But I, I think I'll be disappointed, of course. Well, we'll see. We'll see, okay? Hold your horses. We'll get there. It's a it's a process, okay? We have to we have to go through all of these in the process. Uh, Chaos Space Marine data sheets. So you have the Forces of Chaos, um, Mark of Chaos... Chaos Space Marines did gain a stratagem called Smokescreen, which is the one that the Space Marines got. So one CP minus one hit. So it's you know you kind of tell that they're going to be bringing in some of those stratagems that Space Marines have and kind of build them into uh, like Chaos, right? Um, they also have the Martial Legacy thing, which is the same thing as we saw in the Space Marine book. Like the new Relic tax is instead of having to take like a unit to take a unit, which is kind of how it used to work, You, if you have a unit that has a Martial Legacy, the detachment that that unit is in costs one additional command point for each of those units that you have. So if you want to take a Leviathan Dreadnought in a battalion, the battalion costs four command points instead of three, Remember, your the command benefit is you get, you know you get only three, like your warlord only gives you three back or whatever. Uh, waiting patiently, patiently for space wolves. You mean you mean this one up here, hmm? this beautiful one. We will get to the space wolves and the death watch codex, <gasps> and then I'm gonna have to put timestamps on all this, <laughs> cause we're gonna be here a while. You have not missed Tyranids, but you will be excited about Tyranids. They are nice. Why are we reading the Inferior Races first? We're just going through the book, Valerie. 
We're going through the book. Okay? That's how it's going. Okay, Chaos Space Marines. Decimator. Um, so, Decimator... The Soul Burner Pitard. Unmodified wound roll of a two inflicts one mortal wound. And it's and so instead of like on hits, you actually have to hit and then wound. Sure, but it's on two pluses. And now each assault so so basically it's a little hard to do mortal wounds with the petards, basically. Makes sense. It does have infernal regeneration though, so basically it can heal up and stuff. Which is neat. Uh Chaos Contempt of Dreadnought has so they have added the minus one damage to uh, a lot of these Dreadnought variants, basically. So minus one damage, it is Martial Legacy, five up invulnerable save, has a whole bunch of different guns and stuff like that. And the Chaos Contempt to Dreadnought is, I believe, almost the exact same point cost as, um, as the Space Marine one. Except it's in the Elite Choice. So it's 140 points base, and then say two twin last cannons is 25, 25, so 50, so 190. So it's pretty much the exact same carbon copy as the space ring one almost as well. So <clears throat> just tuned in. I guess I'll wait a moment to see Dread Claw drop pods, then rewind a bunch to see the Imperial Guard stuff like Vendetta Vulture, Tarantula Batteries, then hurry back for Turnits, says Ed. Yeah, that'd be great. Mad the Swine. We will get to the town in a second. They're they're towards the end of the book because they are Xenos. They are filthy Xenos, so they get put to the end of the books. Chaos Leviathan Dreadnought. Okay, so same sort of things that we saw with the Space Marine Dread, uh, Leviathan Dreadnought. The ballistic skill has gone down on these Dreadnoughts to a 3+. plus. Um, it does have minus 1 damage. Basically, it's, they, they basically put that in. It's called Relentless Hatred instead of, like, Oath or Duty Eternal. has a 5-up environmental save instead of a 4-up now. Well, the Chaos of Leviathan always had, a, like, a 5-up against shooting. So it's actually, you know, the Space Marine one got put in line with this one here. And the Storm Cannon Array is the same weapon. Basically, the all of these weapons are the same weapons the Space Marine one gets. There's not really much of a difference as well. Do we have Butcher Cannons? Also Decimator Wounds. Decimator Wounds are 12. 12 wounds on a Decimator. And the Butcher Cannon... What is a Butcher Cannon? On what? Mm, no, it's just, a, it's just a Storm Cannon, basically. No more Butcher Cannons. Just a Storm Cannon. Strength 7, minus 1, 2 damage, basically. Heavy 8. So... The, the Chaos of Vianth and Dreadnought and the Space Marine Dreadnought are, like, exactly the same. What's the price on that thing? For Chaos of Vianth and Dreadnought, it's 220 points. Uh, 10 points for each of the Storm Cannons, so it's 250. No, 245. Yeah, 255? Where are you? Leviathan and Dreadnought, 220. Storm Cannons are 10, so 240. 255 with the 100-kilo missiles, basically. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Appreciate it, buddy. Skari, can you please go back to the Great Knights and check stats on the Twin Psycan, see if there's any change for a ninth? We've gone over that. <laughs> but the they're the same. They're just a dual Psycanon, basically. Um, then we have things like the, the Dread Claw Drop Pod, right? Everybody's wondering about that. It's just a drop pod that has thermal jets, and it can move around, right? It's nine wounds. You have to put it in Deep Strike. And it carries 10 Legion Infantry. Or one Chaos Contempt of Dreadnought. Or one Hell Brute. Yeah. So nothing super crazy there. It could, Dreadclaw can carry Dreadnoughts. And it can carry Infantry. Nice. I've seen a lot of people use some... Uh, Custodius Contempt got the minus one damage. Yes, yeah, yeah. They most of the dreadnoughts got that minus one damage thing, sort of like built in. Yeah, it's the storm cannon now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Levy dreads butcher cannons pour one out. 
for the butcher cannons. Yeah, huge price drop, but it's only T7 now as well, so it's different, right? You skipped the Derrideo! Oh, man. Well, it's about the same as the other one. The Derrideo, pretty much the same. Um, it has the minus one damage, has a five up invulnerable save, has a bunch of different weapons. I don't, it seems to have lost its, like, its, uh, ability to give everything around it an invulnerable save. Basically. You know, a lot of people take the last cannons and whatnot. So, the, the last cannons, or the heavy last cannons, are D3 plus 3 damage now. Instead of, like, D6 damage, if that's a big difference there. And the Derrideos are 190 points stock, and then most of their guns are like 20 points to kind of like change it up. So you're looking at like 220 points and stuff as well for Derrideo. And they all hit on threes now as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is this the new chapter approved? This is the new Forge World Index. Yes, that's right. Welcome, welcome. Stay a while, why don't you? Great Oblige Drone. Dreadl Blood Slaughterer, um, the, the Chaos Land Raider stuff, um, the Land Raider Achilles, about the same. The, this one's 16 wounds, has a 5 up invul, nothing crazy. Um, the Proteus, so basic. a lot of these, by the way, you'll notice, are legit carbon copies of the Space Marine counterparts. Point wise and everything, except they just transfer and have Legion instead of anything else. Um, uh, we'll get to the Dark Eldar soon, but you will be happy. Are the Space Wolf and Deathwood Butch much different to the main Space Wing ones? I know Deathwings have all those fancy weapons. Well, we'll get to them in a second. But they have like their own flair, right? They have the Space Marine Codex as a, as a core, and then they go into their own rules, which is kind of cool. Uh, so the Termite Drill, we went over those. Same thing for the Chaos Terax Pattern Termite Drill. You can sort of pick your Legion. It can give it a mark of chaos if you want. Um, you know, you've got all, a whole bunch of stuff. So, go to everything. You can give it, like, just a bunch of stuff like that as well. Kaitan! <laughs> Could you cover the Sorterer? Oh, man, look at you. Look, you're... Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Where's the Kaitan? Uh, actually, where's the Slaughterer? Blood Slaughterer. Moves 10, 9 wounds, 3 up save. Um... Regenerates one wound per turn. Do not... Uh, you add six inches when it advances instead of rolling a d6. Uh, the Impaler Harpoon. You if you can halve the movement on stuff, basically. And each time a charge roll is made for the Barret, uh, you add two to the charge if you're charging something who you impale or harpooned. And the Slaughter Blade is a 3 damage minus 3 blade. And he has 5 attacks. And he has Corn. Rah, rah, rah. So 5 attacks hitting on 3s. 3 damage. So to kill Space Marines. Yes. Kill Space Marines. The contents list is there so you can see the order. Says Jack Warden. Mm -hmm. Well, we're in the Chaos section right now. Mm -mm -mm. We are in the Chaos Punisher. So, uh, biggest thing uh, we noticed is the, the Scorpius have lost the ability to fire twice. So, that's like one of the big things there. Uh, the Twin Sight is just built into the cost of the Land Raider, which is like 280 points. So it's like just built in. Yeah, so you, it's just like a lot of the point costs nowadays is just like the main weaponry that the, what, that the thing is built in is just just the same it's built in but to answer your question um for the gray knights <laughs> the cost of that land raider is 285 points see that was pretty bang on and if you want to give it a multi meltar instead of its uh um the heavy incinerator you you can oh no you can just give it a multi meltar then it's 20 points for multi meltar basically and the Storm Bolter is basically free as well. And a Hunter Killer Missile is basically free as well. So, why wouldn't you do that? Hell Talon, Hellblade, Flyers, Xiphons, eh, pretty standard stuff. 12 wounds, T7. Just a Flyer that has missiles, has a Hunter Killer Missile. Cool. And a Missile Battery that's 3 damage, heavy 3. Cool. And two Twin Last Cannons. So, a bunch of Last Cannons on that thing. 
the Greater Brass Scorpion. This is a fun one. I enjoy these. It um, is Titanic. It's frenzied. Uh, can roll 3d6 for a charge. Nice. And ignore any and all modifiers. Ouch. So no minuses to hit. Um, no, you can't stop it from charging. That's hilarious. Uh, four plus, just stop it from ignoring psychic powers on a four plus. So it doesn't make your head explode anymore. Assault D6 on the flame cannon. Demolisher cannon. Scorpion cannon is only one damage, though. Heavy 15, one damage. The flame cannon is only one damage, though. I think that changed. I think it used to be more than one damage. And he has two flame cannons and hell crusher claws. But it's strength six or strength, or sorry, damage six or damage two. Uh, or three hit rolls. So it actually has, wow, three hit rolls. So this Greater Brass Scorpion does six attacks times three. That's 18 attacks? I hate Brass Scorpions. Every time I see one, I'm like, I'm terrified. Absolutely hate them. Kai Tan Ravager. I know somebody out there, one of you was, was wanting to. Wait, they gave the Scorpion rules now? The Scorpions always, always had rules. It's always had rules. It's just now there are more rules. Mm. Just started getting into 40k after buying a Drakari to paint at 13 because I was sick in the head. 22 years later, trying to start a Death Guard army. <laughs> still crazy. We're all still crazy, scumfrog. All still crazy. Um, is the Scorpion still 650 points? Well, we'll get to that in a second with all the points. And then the Charybdis Assault Claw is another one that people are really excited about as well. And we'll get to that as well. So Kaitan Ravager, 26 wounds base, uh, 2 damage, strength 8 minus 2, heavy 8 Gatling Cannon, which is a shame. Uh, it did lose its ability to, like, shoot again and stuff like that. And the Cleaver is 3 attack rolls, a two damage each with a slash or smash, which is six five attacks with just six damage minus four. So just straight up six damage or two damage each. And it has 15 attacks hitting on threes with its slash version. And it does have infernal regeneration, so it just like heals up over time. Sounds pretty pretty snazzy. Does the Dreadclaw eat passengers? No. Uh they don't heal by killing stuff. They basically have infernal regeneration now. So they just heal a wound every turn. Kind of like the, the defiler, basically. Is it damage 3 plus D3 in the D6 shot profile? What, the Kai, the Kaitan? No, it's just uh, heavy 8, just 2 damage for the Kaitan, specifically. Mm -mm. Um, Chaos Mastodon, Thunderhawk gone shit. So the Charybdis Assault Claw is, and we'll get to the points in a second. Actually, let's talk about points as we do this. <coughs> so the Blood Slaughter is 140. The Dread Claw is 115, so it's a little bit more expensive than a Rhino. It's basically a Rhino. Um, the Kaitan, well, the Scorpius is 170 points. That's the same for the Space Marines. The Kaitan is... 440 points and the Charybdis Assault Claw is 400 points. The Typhon is 350. The Typhoon, basically, if you wanna, if you wanted to. Give us the Leviathan. You're way late, buddy. We already talked two different Leviathans already. Cer Cerberus. Cerberus? What? Cerberus? What are you talking about? Oh, there we go. The Chaos Cerberus? Is that what you want to know? Um... Comes with crushing tracks and a neutron pulse array, which is heavy four damage two d three, and if it stayed still, the damage becomes six, just straight up six damage if you stayed still and shot with it. Nice. And unstable reactor, it can explode on a five plus. That's it. It's just uh, heavy four. And uh, that's that. Strength 14, minus 4, 2d3 damage, 48 inch range. And if it didn't move, 6 damage with 4 shots. So it's decent. It's not bad. There's some, there's some good pew pew noises. 
pew pew noises. How are you going to fit a Thunderhawk gunship in your Black Templar on this scary? Well, I need a Thunderhawk gunship first. However, if you'd like to donate a Thunderhawk gunship to the channel, PM me. I'll give you my address. You can ship the Thunderhawk gunship to my address. As long as it's only legit Forge World, I won't accept copies. <laughs> I will paint it, make a project, and I will play it as many times as I can. <laughs> Because I think it would be great. Did I talk about the Yavara? No, I haven't yet. <clears throat> Changes on the Loyal Relic Leviathan Dreadnought. Someone in the chat will give you all of the stuff there. Because we've gone through that already. Uh, Charybdis Assault Claw. It is... Has five Storm Launchers. Which are 36 inch range. So heavy two for the cracks. Five of them? Holy crap. Or heavy two D6 blast. Minus one, one damage, strength four. And that's five of them. So that's... 10 strength 8 minus 3 d6 damage shots or 5 so 10 d6 strength 4 minus 1 blast crazy uh, it comes with a melter array which is a melee weapon okay fair enough and a thermal jet array which is after it's moved select one unit and moved across Roll a d6, subtracting one from the roll if it's a character. On a 2 to 4, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. On a 5, that suffers 2 d3 mortal wounds. Huh. So it just does mortal wounds as it flies over you like a bummer. Now, it's kind of cool, actually. And it moves 15 inches. Awesome. It is a hover transport, and it's a drop pod. So it has to be set up in deep strike, and it comes down. So you can't deploy it. And on a 6, it explodes, and each unit within... D6 plus 6 suffers D6 mortal wounds. It carries 20 Infantry Legion, 1 Chaos Contemptor model, and 1 Hellbrute model. Makes sense. I like it. If this model does not have a base, then agree for the footprint. Which makes sense. Uh, they did that with some of the, the, the units like um, the Necron Spider Construct. They said, because it, it doesn't have a base, like determine what the base is going to count as before you play, etc., etc. Can you full screen the camera looking at the books? No. <laughs> no, I cannot. Uh, this, is, this is not about the having being able to make sure you get to read the entire book. This is us... Um, uh, all that stuff as well. Chaos Spartan. Well, the Spartan in both the Chaos and the Space Marine is about the same. It is a 20 wound, toughness 8, 2 plus save tank with um, a martial legacy, so it costs an extra, 25 transport capacity, and it has two quad last cannons, so 8 strength 9 minus 3 d6 shots, uh, twin heavy bolter, which is just a twin heavy bolter and crushing tracks, which are D3 attacks, uh, minus two, six attacks each. Uh, pretty, pretty standard stuff. Hasn't really changed too much. Mm -mm -mm. This stayed about the same. Disappointed said that I don't have rules for my renegades and heretics anymore, says Hail Hydra. Yeah, I could see that. That does make sense. So the Cerberus Assault Claw... Uh, or the Cerberus, sorry. The Cerberus is... Where is the Cerberus? 400 points. And the Spartan... There is a Spartan. Is 460 points. So, about a quarter of your 2,000 point list if you really want to run them. So Death Guard got a specific Death Guard Blight Drone, right? Um, it's basically got a Plate Company keyword. Uh, it has a big a Bite Maul, which is an 18-inch Plague Flamer weapon. The Strength 7 minus 1. And it has a Blight Reaper Cannon, which is a 36-inch Heavy 4, Strength 7 minus 2 Plague weapon as well. And a Plague probe with probe which is just one damage in close combat and has all the like rules that you'd expect from um death guard stuff except it's nine wounds three up save uh demonic so five up invulnerable save as well disgustingly resilient etc etc and nurgle's gift 
I, that might be something that heals. It's 125 points. So pretty standard stuff. It's a 14-inch move, like, plague thingy. Coolio, how many points is a scorpion? Ooh, that's a great question. I did talk about the scorpion. The bra scorpion is 525 points. So if you want to go run around and murder stuff with a giant bra scorpion of corn, 500 points. 525 points. Yep. Yeah, the greater blight draw? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, 125. Interesting. You know, a lot of you chaos players are like, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, right? It's not terrible. Like, honestly, I think this this whole book, personally, is going to, like, add a whole bunch to, like, what we expect, right? Good morning, John the Cron. We haven't even gotten to the Necron stuff. You sniffed it out, did you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It does make sense. It does make sense. Okay, make sure that you're clicking that like button if you're watching live. Make sure you share the video, and make sure that you click subscribe if you haven't already. Or, sub to me on Twitch. Or like me on Facebook. Or support me on Patreon. Cool. <laughs> and this is how many of you watch. And this is how many of you are not subscribed. So make sure you do subscribe. How more annoying can I get? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> okay. Chaos Demons. So this is actually really cool. First thing I want to talk about the demons is that their point levels changed a lot. To the point where they're actually usable. So like... Uh, Atera is 700 points, Angrath is 550, Scabby Thrax is 475, and Zarkinel is 450. So they're like, the max is like 700 points, but then like the cheapest, which is the Slanesh one, is 450. So they're costed like greater demons, right? Which is actually really intense, in my opinion. Um, and I like that a lot, because you might see them, and they're like, they're like gorgeous models too, right? Just click it is fine. <laughs> Smash that like button. <laughs> also check out all the cool merch. I'm wearing my hoodie. The Dream Tea Store has all the merch. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a huge point drop. Um, yeah, so there's some like cool stuff in there. Uh, I love it. I think it's great. So. Uh, the cool, the thing here is, if you have a named character that doesn't have the same thing as before, named character, if you want to make it your warlord, has to take the inspiring leader warlord trait, which is terrible, but um, I guess that's okay too. <sighs> Uraka the war fiend is a corn guy. Um, so he corn demons reroll hits of one basically. Has a three damage shooting attack, which is a sh one shot pistol, and a three damage close combat attack with six attacks in combat. He's uh, basically a demon prince of corn. Cool. Uh, Mammon. Ooh, El Mammon. El Mammon. <laughs> can the greater demons be summoned? Yes. Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Mammon himself, we have. Um, We've got um, Contagion Spray, so 3d3 shots. Uh, automatically hits at 12 inches. 2 damage, minus 2 strength, 5. So it's like a heavy bolter, basically. That's minus 2, but it's 3d3 shots. And a 3 damage fist in close combat. Disgusting Resilient, Demonic Ritual. And reroll ones, because he's a Demon Prince of Nurgle. Then we have Korbax Utter Blight, who is also a Demon Prince of Nurgle. And he also has... He doesn't have the reroll ones to hit, though. He does have Tide of Flesh. Um, he has a 4 plus feel of pain against damage 1 weapons. Nice. You can swallow things whole. That sounds really fun. Roll a d6 on one enemy model with an engagement range. If the result is higher than the model's moon than the model's wound characteristic, that model is destroyed. <laughs> what? At the start of the fight phase? Wow. <laughs> That's hilarious. Scabby's actually really good. They didn't change him much. That point drop is huge. Yeah, there's a big point drop, right? So I think that's really awesome. Heckers, have you gone through Xenos yet? Hello. No, I have not yet. Gobble gobble. That's a really cool rule. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love rules like that where it's like, ah! <laughs> like my Archon runs in, he's like, ah, he charges. Ha ha! Six. No. Nope. <laughs> no shadow field for you. Oh, I'd be so t I'd be so pissed at that. Oh, I'd be so annoyed. Anyway, that's really funny. And has a just a gaping maw, which is three damage uh, with five attacks in close combat. Corbax Utter Blight, who's twelve wounds, so you can't shoot him though. Scabby Thrax, the bloated. 24 power level. They do have demonic ritual, so see Codex Demons, right? Uh, Emissary of the Plague, so Nurgle Demon units can use his leadership. Uh, he has a 4 up invulnerable save. Um, while a Nurgle Demon units within 6, every time an enemy model makes an attack against that unit, subtract 1 from the hit roll, so minus 1 to hit for all demon units uh, within 6 inches of him. And if he dies on a 4+, plus, he explodes does d6 mortal wounds to everybody within d6 inches except nurgle so he's safe to explode around nurgle units which is always good and he is 21 wounds and he's t8 and he has weapon skill ballistic skill 2 plus 3 plus his vomit is 2d6 at 12 inches strength 6 minus 2 2 damage so 2d6 super flamer is pretty cool his blade of decay is plus 2 strength, so strength 10, minus 4, d3 plus 3 damage with a reroll to wound, so strength 10 with reroll wounds, and he has Nurglings, which do 2d6 additional attacks, basically, which I think is really cool. He moves 8 when he's not wounded, and he has Disgusting Resilient, and he's demonic, and all that good stuff, and he is a Chaos Demon Nurgle. Character, Titanic, he is a Lord of War, though, so they are Lords of War, so they are Titanic, Psyker, and he knows he can manifest two powers, can deny two powers, no smite and two Nurgle powers. Not bad for what you get with him, you know, 400 and some points. Like, that's pretty, pretty good in my opinion. Chris Frozen says, dude, how are you? How's your beloved Reaper? <gasps> we'll get to that in a second. Yay. <laughs> Minus one to hit bubble, not just in close combat. No, it's again, it's in melee still. Yes. So the minus one to hit bubble is melee. And it is an aura as well. I do like that. They did sort of like modify or kind of say, hey, all the stuff like that and whatever, et cetera, et cetera. I'm good, Chris. How are you? Thank you for tuning in as well. Angrath the Unbound. So this guy's 24 power level for summoning. This guy's 35 power level for summoning. But Angrath the Unbound is 24 wounds. He has a 16-inch move, and he flies. Um, he has Blood Lash, which is a 12-inch assault, 2d6, strength 7, minus 3, 2 damage. So the whip, right? Um, Whoopa! <laughs> um... <laughs> The Axe of Corn, you can make the Scythe attack or a Cleave attack. Scythe attack, he attacks two hit rolls. He has eight attacks, so he'd be attacking 16 times with strength 10 minus 2 d3 damage. Or eight times with strength 13, which is interesting, minus 4 d3 plus 3 damage. So just to murder a bunch of stuff. Uh, he has a 4-up invul save and a 2-up armor, by the way. Angrath has a 2-up armor save. Yeah, he's a, he's a bad, bad, bad demon prince. Uh, twice per turn, he can attempt to deny the witch as if he were a psyker. Because uh, he can basically deny two powers. Nice. Corn units within nine use his leadership. And when he dies on a four plus, each unit within D6 inches takes D6 mortal wounds as he like lashes. He's pretty much straightforward. He's very straightforward. He flies. He's titanic. He's a bloodthirster. And uh, he has lots of close combat attacks. Nom, 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 nom. Where's my death watch? Right here. <laughs> we'll take a look at them soon. Have they cut the Chaos Hellrite Dark Abriant? I think so. I didn't see them. Then we have Ataos Raukeris. Ataos Raukeris. Fancy name for the Zinch Super Chicken. He's a 28 power level. However, he's one of the most expensive ones. 
So he's 700 points. He's less power level than Angrath, but he's more points. Interesting. Um, so he has the staff. He does fly. He moves 18 inches, so he's super fast. He does have 6 attacks. He's 27 wounds, so he has more wounds than Angrath, and he has a 3 plus save. He has a shooting weapon. It's Assault D6, Strength 8, minus 4, 3 damage blast. Cool. Uh, in melee, it's just 3 damage, minus 4, and 2 times strength, so he's Strength 16. And his Warp Fire Talons are 2 hit rolls instead of 1. And any unmodified wound roll is 6, inflicts a mortal wound. Cool. Those are minus 3 D3 damage. So you could do 12 attacks with that weapon. Nice. 4 plus invulnerable save. Master of Magics. Plus uh, add 1 or add 2. Depending on how many wounds he adds. Friend of these ancient units within 9 uses leadership. If he dies on a 4 plus, everybody takes D6 more wounds within D6 inches. And every time an enemy model successfully manifests a psychic power while within 18 on a 4 plus... That model suffers a mortal wound. Awesome. It can manifest three psychic powers and then attempt to deny two and no smite and two powers. So he can cast all of his powers basically every turn. Interesting. So 700 points. He's just like a super Lord of Change. Not as like durable as some of the Lord of Change and stuff. How did you get a hold of the book so early? Says Daniel Hammer. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when will the orcs be unveiled? Soon. Soon, Daniel. Soon. Well, he was 1,500 points. That is true. Went down to 700 points. Are all the big demons T8? Mm, yes. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we have Zarit. She's not. She's actually T7. The Slanesh one. But she's the cheapest one. I like her, though. Because she moves 14 inches. She's 18 wounds. So she's probably the, the weakest of them all. Uh, she does have Quicksilver Swiftness. She can be summoned as well. Uh, but she has a way to heal. So at the end of the fight phase, if any non-vehicle models were destroyed by this model, th at the end of the fight phase, this model regains D6 lost wounds. So if you kill non-vehicle stuff, she just heals. It's one of the only ones that can heal, and she's the cheapest. If she just kills any models that are non-vehicle, go in, kill a Grot, Heal D6 wounds. Like, that's that's really good. Uh, considering she's, like, super fast, too. She has... Um, each time the bearer fights, you can make four additional attacks with the Scything Claw, or the Slicing Claw, which is three damage, minus four, strength seven. Or the Soul Eater Blade, um, an unmodified wound roll of a four plus, inflicts three mortal wounds, and the attack sequence ends. What the hell? <laughs> so hit on twos. So that's six attacks. Hit on twos. If you roll four pluses to wound, you just do an unmodified wound roll of a four plus. It's just three mortal wounds. What? That's ridiculous. <laughs> you are getting this, right? So I can go in with six attacks, hit six times. On average, I'm wounding three of those on a four plus. So that's nine mortal wounds. Instead of doing three damage minus three, right? Just do mortal wounds. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Can manifest two powers and deny two powers. Wow. She's the cheapest? How's this a thing? <laughs> have you even have you even played against Monster Mash Slanesh? Like, that's dangerous. <laughs> oh man. Who she's 450 points. She's basically the cost of just another keeper. She is a Lord of War though. So that's I think the biggest balancing factor is you sort of have to like pay to put a Lord of War in. I think that's uh the key. Now she has a four up and vulnerable save as well. Yes, yes, she does. She is a keeper of secrets and a monster and all that good stuff. Anyway, seems like those demons got a quite a large overhaul. We might see them more often. More often? More often? Okay, Chaos Knight data sheets, uh, pretty much the exact same as the Imperial Knights data sheets. Nothing super crazy there. Um, 
Lancer, Castigator, Acheron, all that good stuff. Uh, does she still get plus one of saves in melee? Nope. No, she does not. She does not get plus one of saves in melee. But she does have minus one to be hit. And it's each time an attack is made against this model. Minus one from the hit roll. So she has minus one to hit in shooting and close combat. Because she's just... Pretty. And then she kills a grot and heals d6 wounds. <laughs> awesome. Uh, hilarious. I think you're going to see her a lot. <laughs> Together with the other three Keepers of Secrets. Like, what the hell? <laughs> they, they're really nasty, by the way, if you haven't played against them before. Uh, yeah, so War Dog, more axes, about the same. Still have their heroic intervention, that sort of thing. Um, and the Porphyrion. So, they, what's interesting is the Chaos stuff and the Imperial stuff, they basically mirrored it pretty much down the line even with point values and stuff like that so i just blew my slanesh load you're very welcome prime you're very very welcome was tiger shark mentioned we haven't gotten to tau yet remember filthy tau filthy xenos at the end of this book over here as well so <laughs> okay chaos titan warhound titan reaver titan nemesis titan warlord titan Stupid amount of points. Uh, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. They get stupid points. Craft World. And now we get to the Xeno stuff. Okay. Filthy Xenos time. Are you ready? <sighs> okay. Okay. Get ready. <sighs> Okie dokie. <clears throat> if you have your questions, make sure you put your questions up for the Xenos. I know. Don't show my code again. <laughs> I know. I lost my code last time. I'm so sad about that. I was literally, I was like, I was, I was really sad about that actually, because I was like, well, whoops, there goes my code. Just skip the craft world stuff then. No. Uh, okay. So first and foremost, if you have a named character, they have to take the um, inspiring leader warlord trait. Boo. <laughs> okay. Illyrith. And the Shadow Spectres, uh, they, they're about the same as they were before. They went down in points. The Shadow Spectres lost their, like, million shots every time they hit. So, eh, you know what I mean? You know, it's kind of cool. Uh, sure, they're minus one to hit, standard. Uh, I think their point levels went down a little bit. So, you know, I know a lot of people did use them. Uh, they have the minus one leadership buff or whatever. You can deep strike them as well. Now, she gives Shadow Spectres real ones to hit, though. So, is that, like, something that we might see from the um, Phoenix Lords? To give, like, their Phoenix Warriors, like, the their Aspect Warriors, like, real ones to hit? I could see that being a thing. Has a 4-up and Varmal save, which is cool. And she has a 3-damage, three 3-shot three Strength 8 weapon. Or a 2-damage in melee weapon with 4 attacks. So, she's not terrible. Now, the Hornet. Hornets have been super popular, and they are going to get even more popular, in my opinion. I'd like to see the Hornet's weapon options. They still have... They have Hornet Pulse Lasers. Yes. Hornet Pulse Lasers are 36-inch Heavy 2, Strength 7, minus 2, 2 damage. So, less range, better strength than they were before. And Hornets are 80 points base. They move 18 inches. They have 8 wounds each with a 3 up save. They have a built in minus 1 to be hit which is amazing and each pulse laser is 5 points. So you're looking at 90 points for an 8 wounded 4 shot platform that moves 18 and is always minus 1 to be hit. Crazy. Hornets are nuts. Like, you think Hornets... Hey, Dom, how's it going? Um, yeah, Hornets are crazy. Hornets are amazing. Yeah, Hornets... Hornets, okay? Hornets are still incredible. Even more incredible. And yes, you can give them, like... You can give it Crystal Target Making, Sprit Stone, Star Engines, Vector... Whatever. Just keep it cheap. 90 points for a Hornet with two Hornet Pulse Lasers? Why wouldn't you? The built-in minus one? Crazy. My official Eldari 
like brain is telling me you want hornets. Uh, yeah, of course it went down to two, but it went up one strength, right? So it went down heavy. Uh, it's heavy two, and, and it is heavy, so you can't like advance and shoot them and stuff. But strength seven is a big deal, right? So, so strength seven minus two, two damage, thirty-six inch heavy two, and now it's on a platform that is ninety points with the guns and minus one to hit. So crazy. Okay, <clears throat> the links. The War Punter and the Wraith Seer. Yes, the Wraith Seer got moved to a heavy support slot as well. So a heavy support slot on the Wraith Seer. However, it doesn't have its own psychic tree anymore. It uses the runes of battle. So it's essentially a heavy support warlock that is hard to take down. So no longer a character either. Sadly, which means you can't give it relics, it can't be an Ari, like there's no more crazy Wraith Seer, stuff like that. However, it does get runes of battle, so it's like a very tough warlock. It's nine wounds, uh, t you know, three plus save, etc. And, um, and it has an ignore AP1, basically. So pretty decent against AP1, keeps it super save, still toughness eight, all that good stuff. Doesn't deteriorate, etc, etc, etc. That it's not a character, it is just a heavy support choice slot. So if you have, now you can have like three Wraith Seers, three um, Wraith Lords, right? He was going to be my Warlord in my campaign. Oh, that's a shame, Luna. Sorry about that. I'm sorry to break it to you. Uh, the Lynx and the War Punter, pretty decent. Like, it's okay. Like, Lynx Pulsar is just like six shots, three damage each. It has a 5-up invol against ranged. And it can, like, they, they, they kept him pretty standard. The D-Flail is like a heavy D3 flamer. Sorry, heavy 3 flamer, D6 damage, or a heavy D3 shot that's D3 plus 3 that can shoot stuff that's out of line of sight within 24. So, eh, are we going to see them? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, the Nightwing itself is still a thing. It's 14 wounds on a flyer. That has uh, two bright lances, two shuriken cannons, and a crystal targeting ma matrix. Um, awesome. He's got the wings of Cain or whatever as well, so he can like spin, spin, spin. They changed it a little bit. Um, doesn't have like a crazy like super spinny thing anymore. The scorpion is a lord of war. The cobra is a lord of war. Uh, they just have like three damage guns. The cobra has. A D Impaler of some sort. The Scathatch Wraith Knight. Right? So Wraith Knights, uh, you know, they're not exactly D Cannon. The weapon list on the Wraith here looks really short. Uh, yeah, it can still have a D Cannon. So basically it says the model can be equipped with a D Cannon or one item from the heavy weapon list. So you can literally give it any weapon or it's D Cannon. And the Ghost Spear is it has four attacks, plus three, minus three, D3 plus 3. So it's a minimum 4 damage in close combat with his, with his Ghost Spear. Which is pretty neat. Uh, basically go in and like murder some stuff. Peter Scott says, nice one, Scarry. Thanks, Peter. Really appreciate it. It's 2 damage on the Pulsar. The Hornet Pulsars are 2 damage. Uh, what are the Warp Hunter weapon stats again? So Warp Hunter has a D flail. So it's pick one or the other. It's either heavy D3, 24 inches, strength 12, minus 4, D3 plus 3 damage, blast, and it can shoot at stuff that's not visible to the wearer, so minimum 4 damage, minus 4 AP blast, or 12 inches heavy 3, 12 strength, minus 4, D6 damage, flamer, basically, so it automatically hits the target uh, with just 3 shots, basically. So 3 D6 damage shots, or D3 minimum 4 damage shots, up to 6 damage shots. Now, uh, the Sathax Wraith Knight and the Revenant Titan. So, I like the Revenant Titan. It went down to 1,500 points again. So, now you can actually take it and something else, which is kind of cool. It also gained the Craft World keyword. Amazing! <laughs> am I going to use my Revenant Titan? You're damn straight I am. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> so excited about that. 
I like that idea. Uh, the links, you want to know about the links? It just has the links pulsar uh, and a shuriken cannon. It's a 48 inch heavy 6, strength 9, minus 3, 3 damage. That's it. 16 wounds, 3 up save, 5 up bimble. Nothing crazy. Nothing cray cray. How many weapons can the racer take? It has its blade plus one shooting gun. Yes, well, you shall. You shall see the Tyranid stuff soon. Uh, Scathatch Wraith Knight is equipped with two Infernal lances, Titanic feet, and Titanic Wraith Point fist. So the 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 Infernal lances can be replaced by a Death Shroud cannon. Uh, you can either have it as uh, like 2d6 shots at strength 7 or d6 shots at 2 damage each heavy d6 or an infernal lance is uh, d6 shots d6 damage but it's melta rule so d6 plus 2 if it's within 12 interesting you can deep strike it basically and you can put it back into deep strike if you want to if it's not in engagement range. Nice. So you can make it go back into deep strike and deep strike it. So it can still bounce around the table, which is kind of cool. And uh, that's it. The Revenant Titan, though, I love the fact it did go down to Ballistic Skill 3, sadly. Sad face. But it did gain the Craft World keyword. Yes! And it's now 1,500 points. Yes! And the Pulsar Laser are just straight 4 damage. <laughs> and it's six shots each. So 12 shots, strength 12, minus four, four damage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And three damage for its titanic stride, which has four attacks. Sure. And it has a four-up environmental save stuck. I'm excited about this model because I own one. So it's nice to see if I can use it. Remy, uh, we're almost fully done the Forge World thing. But this is still Forge World. Mm hmm and then the Phantom Titan, which uh, is very much more expensive. Yep. Okay, so now we move into... Oh! <laughs> Gotta kill everyone. <laughs> There's no substitute for that. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Oh, good to see you, Kyle McCord. What's going on? Oh, oh, oh. Ah, the Dark Kin. Uh, yeah, let's look at that as well. So Shadow Spectres are 26 points a model. Illyrith is 140, and Hornets are 80 points, plus, you know, you can give it some, like, upgrades and stuff like that as well. But the Pulse Laser is 5 points each, and why wouldn't you take it with a Pulse Laser? Um, Stoke the Tarantula Batteries are Fortifications. Yeah, you can just take a bunch of... Uh... Oh! <laughs> okay, so Drukari Data Sheets, Reaper and Tantalus, in my opinion... Huge buff on both of them. Uh, the Reaper, not so much, but still really good. The Tantalus, really interesting as an option now. First and foremost, the Reaper went up in cost from 150 to 170. It went down in wounds to 10 wounds instead of 12. Both of the Reaper and the Tantalus kept their Cabal, Cult, and Coven keywords, which is amazing. So you can put them in any list that you want. The Tantalus is indeed 310 points, which is a 90-point decrease from what it was. My Tantalus is going to see the table. Amazing. I'm so, so excited for that. They can have all the obsessions. Oh, so good. So good. Tantalus is still 18 wounds, sadly, so you can't hide behind terrain and stuff like that. Wah, wah, wah. It sells the same weapons. It's literally greatly unchanged. They did change the whole, you can, like, you cannot put Scourge or Helions inside of a Tantalus, so they finally fixed that. But that was, like, bound to happen. And it doesn't double move when it advances. It adds 12 inches to it moves when it advances, so it got a little bit of a nerf there. But it still moves 16. And it still has its 12, strength 8, minus 3, 2 damage, like, disintegrator shots, super disintegrator shots, and it still does the scything charge, and all of its attacks, it has 6 attacks in close combat, which is strength 7 minus 2, 2 damage, and it hits on 4s so it's pretty decent in close combat as well, so the Tantalus, 
relatively unchanged, still carries 16 models, lost the whole warlord leadership buff thing, which is fine, because nobody used that anyway. However, it's 310 points. 310 points! That's cheaper than two Disintegrator Ravagers. And you get the transfer capacity. Why wouldn't you? It's 620 points to put two of them in your list. Oh my goodness, it's so exciting. Does it have an invul? Yes, indeed. It has the five up invul save against ranged attacks. Yes, 100%. It is amazing. No splinter rack option? No. But who cares? <laughs> who cares? It's, it's, yeah, it's still too much, sure. But it went from 400 points to 310 points when Ravagers are 160. You know what? Yes, okay. In a land of eradicators, it doesn't last very long. I'll tell you. Um, mm -mm. You know, it's just crazy. Only versus range attacks. That, oh, it, all of the Dark Eldar invulnerable saves are only against range attacks. All of the Dark Eldar invulnerable saves on tanks are only against range attacks. So that's no different with the Tantalus here. The Reaper is 20 points more expensive. Um, sure. But they did change the Storm Vortex Projector, which is the gun it has. It does have a 5-up invulnerable save, the same. It still explodes on 5s. Instead of sixes. Sure. However, the blast weapon is 24 inch, 2d6 shots, strength 6, minus 1 now, so it gained a minus 1, 1 damage. So that hasn't really changed other than gaining minus 1 damage. And it is blast. And the beam weapon, 36 inches, heavy d6, strength 8, minus 4, d3 plus 3 damage. Minimum 4 damage. With dark techno monster, minimum 5 damage. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, so good. Yes. <laughs> My Dark Techno Monster um, Reaper Beam Cannons are so excited about that. Oh, yeah, so it is 10 wounds, 5 plus plus, but it does mean that it only gives up two uh, big game hunter points instead of three. Uh, Tantalus can transport 16 models. I'm super excited that that beam has become way more reliable for damage. Way more reliable. Is the Tantalus still heavy support? Yes. Yes, it is. Dan Meyer says, repeat that, please. Okay. <coughs> the Reaper has a Storm Vortex projector. Now, it did lose the ability to stop people from advancing, but you know, who remembered that anyway? The blast is 2d6 shots, strength 6, minus 1, 1 damage. So it gained minus 1 AP, sure. And the beam is still heavy d6, strength 8, minus 4, d3 plus 3 damage. So it's minimum 4 damage. With dark techno monster, minimum 5 damage. Amazing. Hum no more rolling a 1 for damage ever again. Well, you can roll a 1, but then it's 4 damage. So, you want to kill some Eradicators? You want to kill some Centurions? You want to kill some um, Thunderwolf Cavalry? You want to kill st just hit them with stuff that's minimum 4 damage? Dead! <laughs> Me, I play against a lot of... Okay. Joss Maddox, that makes sense. Like, I did like that rule, and I did use it every once in a while. But, um, no problem, Dan. I hope you enjoy it. You're very welcome. Thanks for tuning in very early in the morning. Like, share, subscribe. Uh, give me money on Patreon. <laughs> okay, Reaper. That's good. Anyway, let's just say I'm super excited. Yes, it went up in points. It's like 10 points more than a, ra than a Ravager. So, you know, it's still very expensive. However, the Tantalus going down makes it actually an option where you can actually play it and not feel like you're getting shafted. Um, and it's pretty much the same as it was. Cool. So let's dive into something that John the Cron would be very, very happy about. Necrons. Uh, a lot of stuff got the Dynasty keyword, basically. They got the Canoptic keywords, like all that stuff as well. Um, as well as like the core keyword on nothing, really. I don't think anything really got the core keyword in this. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Cool. So Canoptic Tomb Stalker. 90 points. 
basically. It is a nine wounded monster. Counterattack monster. That has two damage melee claws with six attacks. Or um, uh, four rapid fire shots that are minus one one damage. Gauss rapid fire shots basically. And it does have living metal and transcendental translocation or whatever. So it teleports or deep strikes basically. The Canoptic Achondrites, they're 40 points per model. They've got a melt -a gun, basically a 12 inch melt -a gun with the melt with the new melter rule. And they're minus one to be shot at. Now I have seen these in action. They're three wounds each. They're like actually kind of cool. They look like little like stubby things or whatever. <clears throat> Sam, take multiple to smooth the variance. Yes. How many points is the Wraith Seer? Oh, I, I guess I didn't actually say that, did I? Uh, um, Wraith Seer is 130 points, and the D Cannon is 40 points, if you want to do the D Cannon. But you can give it, like, a Scatter Laser or a Shuriken Cannon for 10 points. So 130 points. Basically, a ra almost the same amount of points as a Wraith Lord, except you get a really good close combat weapon, and you get Runes of Battle on top of that. So that's not terrible. Yeah, no problem, Josh. Thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Serious point increase on the race here. I don't know what it used to be. Necron time. Still no Lynx points. <sighs> fine, fine. Hold on, hold on. Lynx points. Lynx. Where are you? 220 points. And then 10 points for, you know, and then whatever upgrades you want to give it. Uh, yeah. There you go, Valerie. Race here was 115. Sure. But you got some buffs, right? No more sniper D cannon. Yeah, sadly, Melon. Sadly, a little sad like this. <laughs> right? Um, okay, so Necron stuff. Mm -mm. Counterattack Tomb Stalker, Counterattack Ak Ak Akendrites. The Tomb Sentinel is 125 points, 9 wounds, with like Sentinel Claws and a Gloom Prism. And he can teleport. And he has living metal, of course. The Tesseract Arc was something I saw people use a lot. It does have the new quantum shielding. It has a three up save. It is ten wounds. It has the like an assault. It's D6 weapon that varies from like what you're trying to do with it, from D6 damage to one damage, but it auto hits. So eh, it's not terrible. Except it's 170 points for that. I don't think you're gonna see them very often. Has a 4-up invul save, though, so that's pretty cool. And quantum shielding. So quantum shielding with a 4-up is eh, quite quite hefty. Uh, the Night Shroud does a bomb, like a like a, like a a Void Raven bomber. So 3-plus mortal wounds. The Pylon. Um, so 5-up invul save within uh, 6 inches still. Its focus beam is 6-plus 3 damage. 2d3 shots. Strength 16, so lots of, like, crazy. How many points is a Gauss pylon? Um, 475 points. So I think it might have gone down in points as well. And then the Heavy Construct. Gain Living Metal has a 5-up and vulnerable save. It's 28 wounds. It's like a knight, but it has, like, it can do... Five damage attacks in close combat, or two damage attacks in close combat, with up to 12 attacks in close combat. And it has, like... like I think the scare, you're going to see this the Heavy Construct in a while. The, the Heavy Construct is only 650 points. I have a feeling you might see that thing often. Like, it's a dynasty... which It has a dynasty keyword, so I guess you can also make it OPSEC. <laughs> Please go over the Gauss Pylon. The Exile Cannon on the Tomb Sentinel is still heavy D6. Um, Exile Cannon, it is several heavy D6 shots. Strength 10, minus 4, 3 damage. Yes, yes, it is. You don't mind a small distraction. Any change to the Orc Stomper Squiggeth? Colonel, I will go over the Orcs in two seconds. But thank you for uh, highlighting that as well. No, because I wouldn't get the Dynasty Traits because of the Auxiliary Detachment. Oh, well, that makes sense. You know, I guess you unless you take a super heavy detachment, right? No, but it's... No, no. That's not an auxiliary detachment. A super heavy auxiliary detachment is not the same as an auxiliary detachment. It's a different detachment. 
Scab take heavy construct went down 10 points. Nice. Take two models. That's true. Hey, Aslan, what's going on? Nice to see you. Um, so, Gauss Pylon. Yeah, 30 wounds. Um, it doesn't move. It has two different ways that you can shoot its Gauss Annihilator. So, rapid fire 6, strength 6, minus 2, 2 damage. 30 inches, or the heavy 2 D3 shots, strength 16, minus 4. D3 plus 6, so minimum 7 damage. Cool. And the Tesla arcs, which are assault 3, D6, strength 4, Tesla. And 5 up invulnerable safe. And it explodes on 5s. And it has command protocols and living metal. So it heals and stuff too, which is cool. Nick Blackburn, hey man, thanks a lot for the super chat. That's awesome, thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Um, Sha don't gain detachment to it, the, it's in the server. Awesome. Yo, Skari, you missed whether or not the Chaos Drake Law drop pod can arrive turn one like the Space Marine one. Oh, that's an interesting question. Matt, let's go over that right now, actually. Uh, Dread Claw drop pod. In the reinforcement step of your first, second, or third movement phase, regardless of any mission rules, you can set this unit up anywhere. So, yes, the Dreadnought drop claw, the Dread Claw drop pod can come in turn one. And. The Charybdis Assault Claw. Has the same rule. It can come in on turn one, two. Okay. Thank you for that. Does the Dread Claw eat people? No. Tom says, thanks for doing this. No problem. Thanks for hanging out and tuning in. Really appreciate it. Have I missed the Test Rack Dark? Mm, yes. <laughs> so, Test Rack Dark. Okay, you ready for this, Aslan? Tesseract Arc is 170 points with two Tesla cannons, so 190 points. The Singularity Chamber gets one of three types of weapons, 36, 24, 12 inches, D6 shots each, either Strength 4, minus 3, 1 damage, always wounds on twos, and auto hits, or Strength 5, minus 3, 3 damage, or... Strength 8, minus 3, D6 damage. Yep. Um, do you see anything that Xeno Eldari stuff that suggests rules that might apply to the factions in their codex? Eh, not really. Same sort of stuff. Like, they haven't really changed too much. Can the Necron Bomber use this bomb more than once? I believe so. No, once per battle. Once per battle. It's up to 12 dice, though. Which is pretty cool. <laughs> Emperor says, I joined for Necrons. Nice. Mm -hmm. Obelisks are no longer hot garbage. Sure. Um, Gauss pylon. We did that. Heavy construct. We did that as well. Sentry pylons. So sentry pylons are fortifications. They're 100 points each. And they have 8 wounds each. With uh, living metal. And they have equipped with a Gauss Exterminator and a Teleportation Matrix, so they can, like, Deep Strike or whatever. Um, the Gauss Exterminator is 48 inches heavy to Strength 8 minus 3 D6 damage. And you can give it the Focused Death Ray or the Heat Cannon. Death Ray is Strength, is have one shot, Strength 12 minus 4 D3 plus 3. Or the Heat Cannon is D6 Strength 8 minus 4, it's like a Melted Gun. So you can give it a Melted Gun, you make it like a one shot minimum four damage weapon or the two shots d6 damage weapon why wouldn't you go for the longer range gauss exterminator i don't know the heat cannon's an extra 25 points though i don't know would you buy that i don't think so how many attacks does a serap tech have uh six attack space and then if you use the reaping sweep it's 12 attacks at strength eight minus one two damage or Impaling, which is strength 16, minus 3, 5 damage. Just straight 5 damage, which is pretty cool. Chris Marshall says, what have I missed so far? You have missed all of this, Chris. <laughs> all the Custody stuff, all the Custody stuff, and the Space Marine stuff. <laughs> that was like the first thing I did. Used to be 3 attacks each. They nerfed the sweep. Okay, yeah, so they might have changed it a little bit. 
However, they gave it living metal and stuff. It's pretty cool. I don't know if it had that before, but... Okay, who's ready for some orcs? I know there's a few of you in the audience that really like orcs, so let's dive in, shall we? Daniel Hammer asks a question as I flip over to the orc thing. <laughs> Damn it, says Chris. You know, there's a rewind function. You can go back and, like, go to the very beginning and watch it from the beginning if you want. <laughs> So, first things first, named characters, as always, if you have take a warlord trait, you have to take the inspiring leader warlord trait, which is hot garbage, however, sure. But that's only for named characters. I've been listening, even though I got them all already and made a mini PDF. Sure, Damien, cool, I'm glad, thank you for coming down and listening. Jake says, orcs, orcs, orcs. Nurgle Matthew says, insert a wall. Wall! I don't get it either, Valerie. Literally, Josh Anderson says, Whoa! <laughs> I agree. I agree. I don't agree. I agree that I don't agree that it's a good thing. It's definitely terrible. Okay. War was on a war bike. Breaking head speed war. Like the Death Killer War Trike. So he gives the reroll wounds like the War Trike one does. Oh, the advance and charge like the War Trike one. Cool. And he has. Two dagger guns and a kill saw, but you can replace it to have a big chopper or a power claw instead of a kill saw. Sure. Uh, Mech boss Buzzgob. He has stick bombs and he has two damage weapons in close combat, which is strength 10. Sure. And he does two additional attacks. He has six attacks in close combat. Uh, knit, knit, knuckle, and lunk. Twice per battle. You can repair a model with the Grad Oilers. And you gain an additional lost wound. Cool. So basically, they help him repair and add plus one to his repair rolls. Once per game each. You can... four. He can basically repair four wounds. Nice. He is a goth. Oh, interesting. I did not know he was a goth. You can give any Death Dread, Mega Dread... Mecha Dread, Killer Can, Gorkonaut, or Morkonaut, plus one to hit. Nice. Just plus one to hit on one of, uh, he's like a mech, like a, like a tech marine. That's neat, actually. I don't mind that at all. Does he come with custom force fields? No. He does not. No custom force field on mech boss Buzzgob. Grot Tanks. Even with the stratagem, even with the stratagem, if they're ever given a warlord trait, they can only take that warlord trait. Um, Grot tanks. 35 points a model. Four wounds each. Three armor save. Hits on fours in shooting. They come with a big shooter. <laughs> awesome. The commander is equipped with one of the weapons as well. And he has, ooh, extra attacks in close combat. Get excited. Ramshackle? What? They can make it only one damage? Amazing. And daka daka daka. That's cool. But if you want to give him anything fancy, a rocket launcher is 10 points, or a scorcher 10 points. So you're looking at 35 points for a bunch of rockets. Or a custom mega blaster. Hilarious. Who doesn't like them? Uh, their leadership is leadership 6 or leadership 7. On Grot Tanks. Yeah. Good morning, Robert Lamborn. What's going on? Boo, Grot Tanks and Grot Meta Tanks shouldn't share the fast tank slot. Yeah, well, I guess they do share the fast tank slot. Thank you for doing this, says James Sable to you. Can you please summarize how Eldar Holofields work? Four up and vulnerable save. Hmm. Phantom Titan. Yeah, it's now called a distortion field. It's a four up and vulnerable save. That's it. So basically, the whole of field is now called a distortion field. You just get a four up and vul. Just straight up standard. Mm -mm -mm. Grot Mega Tank. 90 points for a Grot Mega Tank. 11 wounds. Three big shooters, two twin big shooters, one shooter. Can be equipped with a bunch of different stuff. 
also has the ramshackle rule, so can take... By the way, after playing eight games against Orcs in the campaign against um, uh, Mini Wargamer Dave, that ramshackle rule came into play so many times against my blasters and stuff. Crazy. Robert says, what do you think of the compendium? I like it. I think it's really cool. There's a lot of things that all of a sudden became options that were never options. And that's amazing. So, unhappy that the Orky Copter got deleted. I know. Talked to Gear Guts Mech Shop after, like, we literally made a bat rep. He had, like, 13 of them or whatever. Colonel Cabbage says, how happy are you with the Trukin options? Very happy. Two thumbs up. All our vehicles have them now in the Orcs Compendium. Amazing. Hot garbage can come off your shelves now thanks to this. Yeah, I agree. It's cool. Um, so, Grot Mega Tank. Interesting. Knobs on war bikes are a fast tank slot. Um, they're knobs. Mm, they're three wounds each on a bike. You can equip them with a bunch of stuff. They have the keeping order. Here we go. Mob rule. Daka, daka, daka. Sure. And they're speed freaks and they can be any clan. The Mega Dread is 16 wounds. Mega Dreads are 175 points, and you can kind of equip it however you want for 175 points. You can roll 3d6 every time it charges and discard a dice. Nice. And can make a one additional attack with its Ripper Claws if it has more attacks. But the Ripper Claws are d3 plus 3 damage. The Kill Saw is still 2 damage. The Bomb Bits, hilarious, uh, are... D6, so 2D6, Assault D6, and uh, Flamers. Oh, basically, uh, basically a Flamer with no AP. Sure. It is also Ramshackle. That's crazy. The fact that it has Ramshackle is nuts. Nuts. The Mecha Dread. I like Mecha Dreads. Also Ramshackle. It can repair a clan vehicle by for D3 models, so it literally repairs stuff around it. It cannot repair itself, though, sadly. And it is... What is the Mecha Dread? Mecha Dread is 165 points. Cool. And it's uh, equipped with a Kill Cannon and a Ripper Claw. Nice. Then we have the Squiggoth, like a basic Squiggoth. 18 wounds with a 3-up save. It has a transport capacity of 6 models. After it charges, it does D3 mortal wounds on a 2+. plus. Gargantuan Squigger is equipped with Gorgon horns. Is this a Gargantuan Squigger? Or is this just a Squigger? No, that is the big... Is that the big Squigger? Oh, no. Gargantuan Squigger. Why does it say Gargantuan Squigger is equipped with Gorgon horns? Yeah. So it's uh, Gorgon horns is a D6 damage weapon with 4 attacks that hit on 3s. Uh, AP minus 3, which is cool. Uh, the Howder. In the shooting phase, you can shoot with guys inside of the on the howdah. They do not count as an engagement range of enemy units if you're in combat. Nice. Or fell back. Nice. They count as having remained stationary. Huh. So the howdah is actually a better version of open topped. That's cool. Uh, you can carry 10... Oh, has a transport capacity of 10 flash kits or clan infantry. Did, if it is... Oh, if it has a cannon, its transport is 6. Okay, makes sense. So it can carry 10 guys inside. Flash kits. Um, it can't carry mega armor, though. I like Squiggits. Squiggits are fun. Where it ran for several kilometers. What? Supercharged ability as before? No, not really. How many points are knobs on war bikes? Knobs on war bikes are 30 points per model and then plus gear. Power claw is 10 points. Big Trek. 12 wounds. Super cannon. 60 inch. 2d6 shots. Strength 8 minus 2, 3 damage blast. So it's blast, so super 2d6 shot weapon. The big track. Uh, Daka Daka Ramshackle, open topped. It can carry 12 models. It has a spiked ram. So on a 4+, plus D3 mortal wounds to an enemy unit in engagement range it, when it charges. 
It does explode on sixes. And it is 85 points. Plus it's super cannon. Uh, oh no, if it has one cannon, super cannon. Okay, so if you give it a super cannon, cannot transport anything. If you give it just a cannon, it goes down to six capacity. So super cannon is 50 points. So you're looking at 135 points for a big track with a super cannon. It's not terrible for 12 wounds and ramshackle. Then we have the cannon wagon. Bro, bro, bro. What's up, bro? Uh, can you please check the Shadow Spectre's uh, focused? It's uh, damage three, yes. Assault one, three damage, minus three, and six shots. Assault one, 24 inches. So, yes, they're pretty good, like, base three damage. Killer, marine killers is what they are. TV Robbie. Hey, TV Robbie. How are you? Long time no see. Thank you so much for the resubscription on Twitch. Really appreciate it. What is the points of a regular squiggeth? A regular squiggeth, which is... Where's the squiggeth? 190 points, and it's a heavy support slot. Super Scorcher. Does it have it? It has two big shooters. No Super Scorcher. You can have a Super Cannon or a Cannon. That's it for the big track. Then we have the Cannon Wagon. Cannon Wagon is 16 wounds. With uh, has one Super Cannon. Open tops. Cannon Wagon Grot Gunners. Oh, it has Grot Gunners on its cat, so it hits on fours with its the Cannon Wagon. Hits on fours. Ooh, that's a big deal. This one does not have the Ramshackle rule. And it transports six models. I like that, though. How many points is the Cannon Wagon? 170 points. Why wouldn't you pay an extra little couple of points for some more wounds and having Grotz firing the cannon? I would. Is it different from a Gargantuan Squigath? Are they still an Aspect Warrior without an Exarch? Uh, did they give the Shadow Spectres an Exarch power? That's actually an interesting question. Good questions that nobody asked when we were there, so I'm going to answer those questions right now. Um, so they do have an Exarch. So they have an Exarch. They have Deep Strike. They have a Hollow Field, minus one to hit. And Battle Focus, and Ancient Doom, and Shadow of Death, Aura. Within six inches units, subtract one from each characteristic of models. Sure. Um, uh, it does. It doesn't say whether or not it is a, uh, a, a specter thingy. So who knows? Did the big track have ramshackle? Big track does have ramshackle. Yes, the big track does have ramshackle. The cannon wagon does not have ramshackle. The gargantuan squiggeth. Was it called peaches? Is that what they? Is that what they say? Peaches or whatever. <clears throat> So, 36 wounds. Val, you're going to be happy about Peaches, I hope. 36 wounds. Uh, the Gargantuan Squiggeth is 510 points. That's not terrible. Um, it is 8 attacks that goes down. as you, It has huge tusks. That's all it's equipped with. It can be equipped with one cannon or one super cannon. If it has, it then has a transfer capacity of 15 instead of 20. It has the howder rule. It stampedes, so 2 plus 1 enemy unit takes d6 mortals. Gargantuan, you can fall back and charge. It can move across models when it moves, advances, or charges, not vehicles or monsters. And if it dies on a 6, it like gets angry. But the huge tusks are... Minus 4, D3 plus 3 damage. Ouch. 8 attacks. They hit on 3s. D3 plus 3 damage with a 10-inch move. It is an orc clan. And it does have Ear We Go. And it has Daka Daka Daka. And it is uh, like a Lord of War super heavy transport. 36 wounds is not terrible. And it is a monster. So I guess you can also feed it Medi Squigs. 
What you mean it gets angry? Oh, it has a like when it dies, you it explodes basically is what I what I mean. Is that you roll on a six, it goes. Pshh. Is it me or does the orc stuff have ram? Yeah, lots more ramshackle. Lots more ramshackle. Kill tank is next. Kill tank. Kill tank. Two hundred and seventy-five points for a twenty-four wound model with a burster cannon that costs fifty points. So it's actually three hundred and twenty-five points. Add plus one to hit if you're within 18 inches. It's strength 10, minus three, three damage, three D6 shots. Nice. Um, you can replace it with a Giga Shooter, um, which is heavy 30, strength six, minus two, one damage. And add plus one to hit if you're within 24 inches for the Giga Shooter. Nice. It doesn't have Ramshackle. It does have Grot Riggers, but it regains D3 lost wounds. And it has a Ram, 2 plus D3 mortals. Oh, it does have Ramshackle. Nice. So it is Ramshackle. So you might do 1 damage instead of whatever damage, which is crazy. So that kill tank, eh, it's pretty neat. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty awesome. It has a 3 plus armor save. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, does the 510 for the Gargantuan Squigath include the guns? The Super Cannon is 40. The Cannon is 15. Um, the Super Cannon is basically the same as all the Super Cannons, which is 2d6 shot, strength 8, minus 2, 3 damage, blast, 60 inches. Or just a Cannon, which is whatever a Cannon is in the Orc Codex. Or you can take it without a gun, and then it's just straight up. So it's 550 with the Super Cannon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does any of these four drill units have invul saves? Not from the orc perspective. No, no, they do not have invuls. They do have a lot of ramshackle, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, doing ninety shots. Yeah, yeah, but they're only AP. Well, they're AP two, strength six. They're only one damage though. But they do have daka daka, so that's pretty cool. And then we have the good old custom stomper, which is eight hundred and eight hundred points can be up to 870 points if you give it belly weapons and stuff like that. It has bi three big shooters, a def cannon, the gaze of more, custom super rockets, scorcher, super gatler, twin big shooter, and a mega chopper. You can give it a belly gun, and then it loses the transport capacity. And so where's the stomper lifter dropper? 48 inches heavy, 43 uh, if it hits, you roll 3d6. If you're greater than toughness, that attack, it wounds. Okay, And it's minimum 4 damage. So you have to beat the toughness on 3d6 of whatever you're shooting at. And it just does minus 4, d3 plus 3 damage. If it is heavy, 4d3, which is pretty cool. The Gaze of Mork is heavy, 318. Just 6 damage, strength 12, minus 4. Just like, bazap. The Belly Gun is heavy, 3d6, strength 8, minus 2, 2 damage, blast if you do want to do that. The Super Rockets are heavy D6, strength 8, minus 3, D6 damage blast. Nice. The Custom Super Rockets, which is cool. It is not Ramshackle. It is bigger and stompier and has a Stomper Rigger crew, and it is an effigy like the Stomper. Has Daka Daka, here we go. Chop and Crush. If it has two melee weapons, you get plus one attack. And it's Stomper Claw. Stomper Claw is pretty cool if you wound on a 4 plus D3 mortal wounds in addition to any normal damage. Wow, that's really cool. And it's damage 9. 9 damage with a Stomper Claw. <laughs> Do you want to kill some knights with that? Yes. Ain, hey, thank you very much for the super chat. No question, just sending some support for the Darkkin. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thanks for. Sharonan, happy Halloween! Switched to here. What does that mean? Switched. Switched to here. Thanks, Robbie. Really appreciate it. If I'd realized I was going on, I would have gotten on from the start, says Sharonan. Yeah, man. Where have you been? I've been going for 2 hours and 15 minutes. <coughs> Grey Falcon. Yes, you did miss the Eldari family. Does it hit on fives? It does hit on fives. Yes. Raged. Slowly but surely. That's right. We're going to... 
points went down for the custom stomper. Yeah, you know, you know, we're gonna be living the stomper life soon enough. <laughs> that's like two hundred and fifty points cheaper. I'm, I'm. That's okay. I'm sure. Awesome. Custom stomper time. Does not have an invul save though. Uh, just have to, you know, do a little stretch here after two hours. Hey, hey, Jack, what's going on? Okay, okay. What's next? What's next? Show my coat off? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tau! And why is it right at the end? Because nobody loves the Tau. <laughs> and then we have Tyranids and stuff after this as well. Okay, so Tau, named characters get the stupid Warlord trait. Sure. Uh, Shazzle, la, 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 la. Uh, is a crisis suit guy with dro marker drones. Basically has experimental pulse submunition stuff. Um, EMP. Each time a weapon is made as a vehicle on a successful hit roll, you just take three mortal wounds instead of any damage. So it's like it's like a super haywire shot. Hyper density shot, two shots, two damage, strength nine. Iron cluster shell, D6 shots, minus one, one damage blast. Um, can deep strike, has a four up invulnerable save, has plus one armor, so he's a two up armor, uh, has reroll hits and wounds against characters, and uh, has minus two from any charges. So photon casters is minus two from charge rolls. So I could see that being a thing in the new Tau Empire, like trying to stop people from charging. Big Daddy says, oh yeah, baby. Tau, here we go. That's right. 40 wounds still? For the custom stomper, 40 wounds, yeah. And it still has the four blocks of wounds. For some reason, they love this whole, like, taking stuff away from a stomper every 10 wounds. Why? What's the point? <laughs> Instead of just, like, normal. Anyway. I love the Tao to save your anarchy. <laughs> uh, hence the air quotes. Uh, I was sleeping. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. Let's go into stuff that people want to know. Hazard battle suits. Um, well, actually, I should probably pull the points up here. Mm -mm -mm, tiger shark. Tiger shark does whatever a tiger shark wants. He's a tiger and a shark. Na na na, na na na. Okay. Um, hazard battle suits is sixty-five points a model. Sure, four wounds. Has the burst cannons, which are. Eight shots for basically two burst cannons. Phase gun or strength six minus one. They have minus one to their charge. If you charge them, it's minus two to their charge, so you can. It's harder to charge them. Irvana battle suit. Uh, Ir Ir Arvana is three hundred and twenty points. Three hundred and twenty points for that suit. Fifteen wounds on the battle suit. Has the pulse submunitions two cannons, so it's each cannon is heavy three d three strength six minus two two damage blast, or heavy nine strength seven two damage blast. So it's basically eighteen shots strength seven minus two two damage. Um, you can give it two support systems. Has a five up invul in the reactor. You can give it a four up invul. You can. Oh, if you overcharge, then you can pick the Novus charge. Okay. And uh, D3 mortal wounds for enemy units in close combat on a 4+. plus. Got the Sept. Is a battle suit. Ravana battle suit. Battle suit? Has a battle suit keyword. Sure. Awesome. Nom. Troops 8 by target shot. Yeah, that's true. Scary. Did base save on Levy or Contemptor change? Oh, the save. We didn't actually check the save, did we? I think it did. I think it went down to a 3+, plus, to be honest. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure... It was one of the first things we went over. Um, one of the first things we went over. One of the first things we saw. One of the first things after so long. Why are we going back to this... It, no, it's a two-up save. Uh, the Relic Contemptor is a three-up save, and the Derodeo is three-up. The, the Leviathan is still a two-up save. Cool. <laughs> Irvana Tetras. Sure, they have a cool marker light. Okay, everybody was lo was hoping to learn about the Irvana. Their phased plasma flamer went down to one damage. 
It's even in Nova. In Nova, all it did is it gained an extra D6 if you Nova charge it. Yeah, apparently that was a big, big change. Um, you know, it used to be, what, like three damage or whatever. So I think RIP Yervana, in my opinion. And it went up to 300 points. Or it's 300 points for one damage on the Flamer. Now, the Ionic Discharge, the cannon, does have two or three damage. But it doesn't have, like, a Flamer that does three damage anymore. So we'll move on quickly like a Band-Aid. <laughs> the Stealth Drones... Um, cool. They still fly their aircraft, and they have, um, like, Strength 5 Burst Cannons, sure. Uh, Barracuda and Tiger Shark. The Tiger Shark is 375 points. Uh, hits on 4s now. That's a huge change. Doesn't hit on 2s anymore. Um, has a 5-up invul save, though, so that's pretty neat for a tank. However, hitting on 4s is a big deal for Tau stuff. Yeah, a lot of stuff changing to hit on stuff. We turn is right at the end. Nids are next, yes. They hate Xenos? Eh, they don't really hate Xenos. Maybe a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tiger Shark, cool. Uh, A101 Tiger Shark. have no idea what they do. They have a heavy rail cannon. And has six Seeker Missiles. Sure, up to six Seeker Missiles. The A101 Tiger Shark is 450 points. So it's a little bit more expensive. With up to six Seeker Missiles. You can pay 30 points worth of Seeker Missiles. Sure. The Manta! 2,000 points? Yeah, 2,000 points. Do you want to use a Manta? Sure. Taunar Supremacy Armor. You'll be happy to know that Taunar is only 1,000 points. With all of its upgrades. So the Taunar is actually pretty cool. However, it did lose the Battlesuit keyword. So it does not benefit from drones. So sad face for that. However, it's still it's got a lot of... It's only 1,000 points. It's, it hits on threes now instead of twos. And it still has... Uh, it is still festooned with lay weapons. Is the Manta a transporter? Uh, yes, this model has a transport capacity as follows. 200 infantry, 4 devilfishes, 8 battle suits. <laughs> yeah, of course, still. Still a giant transport. Uh, ballistic skill on the Avara. I'm assuming it's a 4-up. Uh, 4-up, yeah, 4-up on the Avara. Nothing has changed there. Or maybe it did. Hello, Skari, can you check if Custodes, Ares, and Telamon uh, need CP to put them in? Uh, Rafal, is the Taunar a vehicle then? Taunar, Taunar. It is a vehicle. Yes, yes it is actually. It is a vehicle. It's just, uh, so it has the vehicle keyword. It is Titanic. It is Supremacy Armor. Um, let's see uh, what the Custodes things are. So the Telamon does not cost points. Uh, CP to put in. And... The Caladius tank, I don't think it costs points either. Caladius grab tank, no, they don't cost command points. They're not like the, the Space Marines and stuff where you're putting relic stuff in. Like, they're all relics, so why would they cost extra CP for that? What's the new Void Shield rule? Uh, so Void Shields are like three wounds extra per Void Shield, basically. It's just three wounds per Void Shield extra. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are, yeah, and that's what they do. Tyranids! So, everybody's wondering about the Malanthrope. So, Malanthrope is 150 points. He still kept his minus one to hit buff. However, it got buffed to six inch radius instead of three inch radius. And uh, his prey adaptation changed a little bit and stuff like that. Still has, and his Toximite. Like, he's still pretty much the same, but he went up in points. However, he um, it's a 6-inch bubble now. Yeah, so that's like the biggest one. 150 points for Malanthrope. Still amazing. Except it's now a better aura for minus 1 to hit. So, what's Tiberius the Red Wake like? Any weapon stat changes on Taunar? Uh, I'm not sure. Taunar, weapon changes, they seem pretty much the same. You've got four burst cannons. 
which are the same. Uh, three pulse ordnance drivers, which um, pulse ordnance drivers, which are either two shots, strength ten minus four five damage, or d six shots, strength eight minus two two damage blast. Uh, and four smart missile systems which are the same, and two triaxis ion cannons. So the triaxis ion cannon are so it's got two of them. It's either heavy nine, strength seven minus two two damage, or heavy three d six, strength eight minus two three damage blast. And you suffer mortals if you take uh, um, for ones or whatever. So, <clears throat> the range on the Avara Flamer is still 8. No, it's 12 inches. Mm -hmm. 12 inch Flamer. Any, um, can we look at the Secutari? We did earlier. Casper, no problem. No problem. We did earlier. You can always rewind and take a look after. So, Myotic Spores, eh, sure. they about the same. They float in and stuff. Sky Slasher Swarm, they're like flying um, flying Ripper Swarms. Sure. Uh, Dimacaron. I really like the Dimacaron. I think it got a bit of a boost. The Dimacaron is a fast attack choice, right? So it doesn't compete with much in the book itself. And well, let's uh, try and get the points properly. Dimacaron is 230 points stock. It moves 12 inches, has 18 wounds. It has six attacks that hit on threes in close combat, and you can re-roll hits with its massive scything talents, which are d3 plus three damage minus three p plus one strength. So strength eight minus three d3 plus three damage with six attacks. It also has its scything tail, which is two damage. Right? Has instinct, it is a leaper killer, so it has a five up invault. Uh, it can move over stuff without penalty. If it dies, it does explode on a six up. Yep. Um, within three inches. Now, the Thorax Spine Maw is actually really cool. The Thorax Spine Maw is after you attack, before you consolidate, you pick one unit with an engagement range. You roll a d6 versus your opponent's d6 to their strength. And if they roll equal or less, um, the model suffers d6 mortal wounds. So it does like d it can do mortal wounds in combat, which is really cool. And then if any models are destroyed as a result of those mortal wounds, you gain 5-up feel no pain for the rest of the game. Which I think is actually really neat. So it's got a 5-up invul. If it kills something with its thorax spine mole, it gets a 5-up feel no pain, and it has 18 wounds, and it moves fast, and it has like a really cool weapon. So I think the Dima is... You might see the Dima. It, it's really cool. So, um, so Malanthrope definitely units, six inch are not models, <gasps> friendly high fleet unit that is not Titanic within six inches, minus one to the attack hit roll for ranged attacks. How many points are the Sky Slasher Swarms? Mm, I didn't know anybody cared. Sky Slasher Swarm, 15 points a model. Yeah. Happy Halloween! Wah, wah, wah. What's the armor save on what? Uh, Malanthrope? A 5 up. Uh, <laughs> the Dimmer Charon has a 3 up. Then we have the Stonecrusher Carnifex. 3 damage record claws and a bio flail. Make 2 hit rolls for each attack made by this weapon. Which could be up to 8 attacks with a Stonecrusher. Nice. And it rams you and does mortal wounds when, uh, you know, and gets plus 1 hit when it, when it charges. Cool. Barbed Haradrul, Scythe Haradrul, 18 wounds each, and they're 275 and 235 points for Titanic. Oh no, they're heavy support. What? Barbed Haradrul and Scythe Haradrul moved to heavy support? Is that new? I thought they were Lords of War, but I think that means that they're heavy supports? Right? Please correct me if I'm wrong. But that seems pretty snazzy. Um, they went down like, yeah, they went down a lot. And they have like bio cannons. They're like heavy six, strength eight, minus two, two damage. They're like 18. They're like, basically, they're like a land raider, right? They're thinking land raider style. So about 18 wounds each. They're, they're not titanic. They're just monster barbed. Monster barbed. They're not a titanic vehicle. They're just a large monster, which is kind of cool. Bio acid spread spray is heavy 3d6, 
strength 6 minus 2, 1 damage with an 18, and they move 12, and this one moves 8. So they, I guess they did slow them down a little bit, potentially. They are high fleet, so they get high fleet bonuses. Bo bonuses. And the Scything Talons, higher dual Scything Talons, are so they get 4 or 6 attacks, um, reroll 1s in combat, and they're plus 2 strength, so strength 10, minus 3, and minimum 4 damage. D3 plus 3 damage. Now, I feel like they got a big buff. Barbed and Scythe Hydrals, personally. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Antichrist, you did miss the Mastodon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a huge buff. Seems like we're going to be seeing a lot of Tyranid armies with the higher duels in them. So you better... But you know, then again, with Eradicators being around and stuff, like stuff that has lots of wounds just gets melted pretty easy. They still don't have an Invulse save. However, being a monster, does that mean they get like the High Fleet adaptations from Psychic Awakening? Hmm, interesting. Cost on the Stone Crusher Carnifex. The Stone Crusher Carnifex is 105 points for a 8 wound Carnifex with a 3 plus save. And you can give it Wrecker Claws for 10 points instead of the Bio Flails. Bio Flails make 2 attacks and their damage 2 minus 1 AP. I'd still keep the Bio Flails so you have 8 attacks with it, but that's just me. Oh, actually makes me excited for Nadzilla again. Yeah. High for the adaptations. Yeah. Uh, higher jewels, like, I know a lot of tournament players that own higher jewels. Mmm. Mmm. Interesting. There are going to be a lot of people running those. The Haridan and the Hierophant, eh, they're about the same as they were before. Nothing super crazy. Um, the Haridan is still a lot of war, 700 points. The Hierophant is 850 points. So it went down, I think, quite a lot in terms of points. Instead of, what, 1,500 points or something? 850 points, which is a 50% decrease. The Blyoplast, so it, its guns are a little different. It has 36 wounds. Um, it uh, does mortal wounds to units close to it. it has a 5-up invul save. Can carry 20 infantry models. So, that's neat. Mm -hmm. Hierophant is how many points? 850 points. It is still a Lord of War, however. Raphael says, thanks a lot, Scary. My friend is happy. We'll send him your Patreon link. Thanks, buddy. Really appreciate it. I said 850 points. A 850 points. <laughs> Higher duels. Are they T7 now? They're still T8. Still T8. That's down from 2,000. Was it 2,000 points for the Hierophant? Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, I guess they want you to use the Hierophants now. Stuff like that. Why not? Why not keep it exciting and interesting? Okay, folks. That is all we have for the um, uh, Barbed Hero. It's a 3d6 strength 6, 1 damage flamer or something like that. So they, they're not too damage anymore, but they do close combat a lot. So, Quick question now that we're at the end of Forge Book. Do you think the Codex in January will be in New Zealand's race or an old? Uh, hopefully... Um, it does come with a code at the back, my mirror. <laughs> the Vex, woo, no problem. Okay, okay, quick vote, quick vote. You technically have, um, I'm going to give you a, a minute to put in your votes. Should I review the Space Wolves Codex next? Or the, the supplement? Or should I review the Death Watch Codex next? Put in your votes now, folks, and click that like button if you haven't already. Let's see, let's see, which one will win, which one will win. Going once, going twice, going three times. <laughs> wow, lots of votes for Death Watch, holy moly. Uh, Death Watch, Death Watch, Death Watch. Death Watch definitely winning right now. If you're a Space Wolf fan, you better put Space Wolf in the Space Wolf thing. Space wolves, 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 woof, woof, furries. You know, that doesn't count. You have to say Space Wolves or Death Watch. Death Watch, Death Watch. Oh, so far, Death Watch definitely, definitely winning. Definitely, definitely winning. Wolves, Death Watch. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, we got a few more seconds here. Let's see, let's see, let's see how this goes. Space Wolves. <laughs> Like, need to buy this book, Ed? Yeah, I hope for, Of course, Space Wolves. No, it doesn't count twice. Death Watch. Death Watch. Death Watch. Okay. Results are in, folks. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Blood Angel Codex is Marius. That doesn't count. Okay, did Super Chat change anything? <laughs> you, uh, the, the Space Wolves already won. <laughs> they won, okay? Space Wolves won. Seems like uh, Space Wolves are the victors. Coming out, countercharging. Space Wolves taking it with a 16 to 14 or 17 to 14 or something like that. So Space Wolves are victorious. So we will now do the Space Wolves soon. Oh! If anything, Blackburn, Patreons would get two votes instead of one. Just saying. <laughs> Smelly dogs. <laughs> okay, so Space Wolves, note to self, let's not give out the code. <laughs> like I did last time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and remember not to do that again, shall we? <laughs> All right, we're heading to Space Marines. I'm out of Goshkar. It's 8 o'clock. You've been at it for two hours, two and a half hours, and we still got two codexes to go through. If you'd like to support the channel, Patreon's down below. Super Chats are welcome. Sub on Twitch so I can keep on doing this every time we have a new release, um, and I can do it for all of you folks out there. Like, share. Like, click that like button. Smash that like button. Rah! Yo, Flood of Red, what's going on? Okay, let's dive in, shall we? Oh! Ow, ow, ow! Ow, ow, ow! Ruff, 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 ruff. And that is the end of our Space Wolf's Codex review. <laughs> Got an IG in Uternus Codex instead. No problem, Ed. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's only 8.30 in the morning. <laughs> Sharona, so my vote for Deathwing is doubled for Patreon. That's right, Sharona. <laughs> Still, even with that, it didn't count. <laughs> no, no. we the, the Space Wolves won fair and square. No, it was this person who asked if Super Chats gave him extra votes. And I said, if anything, Patreon would give extra votes. Um, <laughs> but not today. We're going into the wolves. Okay, so you got all the wolf stuff. Oh, well, well lots of wolves. Deeds and sagas and all this good stuff. You don't care about any of this. You want to get into the nitty gritty, uh, the nitty gritty potatoes. So the cool thing about the supplement is it's just pretty straightforward. Um, so the Space Marine book we already have gone through. We know it. So Space Wolves base basically off of the Space Wolves Codex, right? Somebody please timestamp this in the comment section down below. Timestamp it. So that people can get to this point right here, and I can like pin the timestamp. I should probably pin the timestamps or put them in the in the the video description or whatever. Um, Marco says, "Death Watch, yeah, Death Watch will be soon. Death Watch will be soon. See, sitting right here, getting getting ready. Sneaky Death Watch." Oh, <sighs> so I did notice that some of the a lot of the stratagems changed for the Space Wolf supplement. So first and foremost, they kind of talk about successful chapters and how that works. Almost pretty standard, kind of how that works as well. Give you an idea of like your combat patrol stuff. Detachment abilities. So in the detachment, you get Berserk Charge for Sky Claw units. So all Sky uh, Swift Claw units get Berserk Charge. If they have the Swift Claw keyword, which in the Space Marine Codex, there's a couple of units that gain the, 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 gain the Swift Claw keyword as well. Um... There aren't any rules on Fenris. You are right. You are right. As well. Uh, every unit in your army has Space Wolves with a Combat Doctrine. Gains Savage Fury, which is when Assault Doctrine is active. Any unmodified roll of 6 scores an additional hit. So they have Tesla attacks in close combat, which is still one of the strongest things you can do. So let's dive into the stratagems real quick. So biggest thing I noticed is they lost the stratagem for... Um, they lost like the crazy attacks on four stratagem. They lost the um, they lost the uh, ability to like 
get command points when they kill characters, stratagem that was free. You know, but they gained some pretty decent stratagems. So go for the throat uh, in the command phase. If the assault doctrine is active for your army, um, any attack from a pistol or melee on an unmodified roll of a six, you improve the AP. This is cumulative with combat doctrines. So once per battle for two CP, you can make all your pistols and all your close combat attacks do an additional AP on a six to wound. That's like an army wide thing for two CP. And most of the supplements have something like that. This like once per battle, you get like a cool thing that happens for your whole army. Cunning of the Wolf, 1 CP, Space Wolf Infantry Unit, gain outflank ability during deployment. So you can basically outflank an infantry unit, but there's no there's no limit to this. You can kind of do this during deployment, and for 1 CP, put out units in outflank if you want. Um, Emperor's Executioner's Fight Phase, when you pick a Space Wolf Unit to fight against Thousand Suns, we will hit and wounds. For one CP, so look out, Thousand Sons. Mm -hmm. Savage Strike, so one CP or two CP. So one CP if you have five or fewer models. Two CP if you have more than five models. In the fight phase, when a unit is going to fight, if you made a charge move this turn, then until that fight is resolved, each time a model makes a melee attack, add one to the at the wound roll. So if you charge, you get plus one to wound. That's pretty decent. That's not bad. Healing bombs, you can basically select an infantry biker or unit within three inches of a wolf priest, and you regain D3 wounds. So space wolves can't, don't have apothecaries. They can't just like bring models back from the dead, but they do have a CP thing where they get to like you know, heal a unit D3 wounds. So like a Thunderwolf or, a, you know, uh, infantry or like a character or a biker. So that's pretty decent as well. Pack Hunters. So in the charge phase, select an enemy unit that is within engagement range of a Space Wolf unit. So it could be after you charge a unit and get a unit within engagement range, then you can use it. Or if you're already in engagement range, you can use it, right? Um... So every time a unit declares a, tar a charge against that unit, you can roll an additional d6 and discard one of the dice. So against that unit that you're already in combat with, everybody else gets 3d6, pick, pick two dice against it. Cool, to charge. And until the end of the turn, Space Wolf Cavalry models make an extra attack with its teeth and claws against the unit. And each time a Beast model makes an attack with its teeth and claws, you can reroll wound rolls. So... What happens is pack hunters is your wolves and your mounts get an extra attack and can reroll wounds against that unit, which is kind of cool. So, so it's like instead of the extra damage, which is what you used to be able to do, you basically get reroll wounds, right? So that's pretty neat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they get plus one attack. So a little different than it was, but they did lose that whole like two damage on all your like wolf attacks or whatever. Relentless Assault. Space Wolf unit for your army consolidates. You can move an additional three inches for that consolidation move. It's not cumulative with anything else that lets you consolidate, like Ragnar's extra consolidate and or the chaplain's litanies or whatever. Cloaked by the Storm is a 2 CP uh, minus one to hit. So instead of 3 CP, it's 2 CP. Um, but you have to be using the Tempestus Discipline. And then everybody within six inches of the Psyker is minus one to hit. Like, uh, that's really, that's awesome. Now, this one's interesting. Deed worthy of a saga. Now, uh, Space Wolves have this thing where they have the, they have the, um, the sagas or the, the deeds. Yeah. So they have the deeds that they want to do, right? And each deed has a thing. And as soon as they, a hero, like a warlord, completes the deed, then the saga effect happens, and then it like, becomes like an aura, basically. So this is, <clears throat> if you have any character that doesn't have a deed, right, that's not a warlord or whatever, if they complete one of the actions from, like, a deed, like, if they do one of the things that you're supposed to do, even if they're not necessarily, like, they're not on a quest to do it, if they complete it, you can spend 2 CP and then get the bonus for it, which is awesome. So you can all of a sudden have, like, 
auras that do stuff because of their sagas if they do cool shit in the game. And you can have like characters that aren't necessarily your warlord become awesome. So they lost the ability to get like a lone wolf or whatever. However, they gain the ability to make like characters better if they do cool stuff throughout the course of the game. So that's neat. I like that mechanic a lot. Uh, trophy bestowed allows you to pick a um, successor chapter to take a relic of the fang, basically. Thane of the retinue. So pick a um, space wolf model that has a sergeant or pack leader, and you can give them a like a special weapon, basically. Like a relic weapon. Warrior of Legend. Pick a character that's not your warlord to take a warlord trait. It can. It has to be unique. And uh, we, we, you have a saga associated with the warlord trait. You can only use the strategy once. So extra warlord. Did the relic Sakaran Punisher cannon change at all? Didn't see it covered in the Fade Room me bit. Uh, relic Sakaran Punisher cannon... Uh, I'm not sure. Let me just quickly check that. I know we're in the spatial thing, but I, I should have probably really checked that as it is a relic. And this is the last thing I'll do for the relic stuff. <laughs> relic Sakaran. Now, I know the Sakaran is very popular. It's the only reason I'm doing, I'm checking it is because the relic Sakarans and stuff are like super popular. World in Scorpius, Sakaran, Gatling Cannon. The Punisher. 18, 6, minus 1, 1 damage, 36. Cool. Ta-da! That's it. Okay. So back to Space Wolves, because that's what everybody voted on. Um, bestial Nature. In the command phase, if a combat doctrine is active, select one Space Wolf Infantry Cavalry Biker Unit, and you make the Assault Doctrine active. That's really good. One CP, make the Assault Doctrine active for one of your units means that you can actually get stuck in early on and like have like your close combat units actually do close combat from early in the game. Counter charge is really neat. It's for one CP, you increase the heroic intervention from three inches to six inches for a Space Wolf unit. Because they already all have built-in heroic intervention, but for one CP for a unit, you can make it six inch intervention. If it's a character that you want to do it for, it's zero CP. So any Space Wolf character can heroic intervene six inches for zero CP, which is kind of cool. Keen senses, um, you can ignore, so you use it in the shooting phase. You select a infantry, biker, or cavalry unit. Until the end of that turn, you ignore all or any hit modifiers. That's it. You ballistic skill or weapon skill modifiers, and each time you make a charge roll, you ignore any modifiers to that charge roll. So you can't modify the charge roll, you can't modify their hit rolls. No minuses to hit in shooting and in close combat. But you have to use it in the shooting phase, which means if you want to do it on a close combat unit, you sort of give up the ability to use it on like your long fangs. But that one's really good, especially with stuff like, I don't know, something that slows your charge down, right? That modifies your charge roll. All of a sudden, the charge roll can't be modified. That's really, really strong. That is, that is probably one of the strongest stratagems in this book, which is crazy. Mm -mm. They ditch Lone Wolf. I think everyone playing Crusade just be the side for relief. <laughs> Thunderwolf Cav do have teeth and claws too. No Chief Apothecary BS for Space Wolves. Correct. Correct. My nano mines. Yeah, exactly. So they yeah. So that sort of stuff. Just uh, no slowing. No slowing Thunderwolf cavalry down unless you move block them. And even then, you have to stay six inches away from them, or they're gonna heroic intervene into you. For, for one CP. Ouch. And then runic wards. Um, after a psychic test is passed, you can pick a space of unit within 12 and try and attempt to deny it as if it were a psychic. So it's kind of like a you can try and deny it with any space of unit as long as they're within 12 if you don't have like a, a thing. So it's not as good as like the Black Templar one or other ones that are like that. Okay, so then you have your warlord traits. Now, all lots of, like there are like 14, 10, 10 special characters or named characters in this book. So many named characters. It's crazy. Uh, oh, well, nine characters, but Grimnar for some reason is, is uh, twice here. So Beast Slayer. While the Warlord is in engagement range of a monster or vehicle, add one to attacks. 
Each time this warlord makes an attack against a monster vehicle, add one to hit and wound. So, anti-vehicle monster warlord trait. Wolfkin. For shock assault, this warlord is always treated as having made a charge, and you get d3 attacks instead of one. So, plus d3 attacks every combat for Wolfkin. Warrior Born. Start of the fight phase, if you're within engagement range, you can fight first. So, Warrior Born, fight first. Hunter. Add one to advance and charge rolls, and this warlord is eligible to charge after it advanced or fell back. So that's really cool. That's actually really neat. I like that one a lot. Hour of Majesty. Add three inches to the rights of battle, tactical precision, chapter master, and spiritual leader abilities to a max of nine. Add three inches to the range of any litanies recited to a maximum nine. Resolve of the Bear. Every time, so a six up feel no pain for wounds, and a, an attack made against this warlord, your opponent cannot re-roll the wound roll and cannot re-roll the damage roll. So no re-roll wounds or damage against your warlord. You have to stick with the damage and stuff like that. Is the, does the book still have wolf priests or are they just chaplains? Chaplains are wolf priests. Like That's because they get the wolf priest keyword, right? Is Canis Wolfburn in the book? Yes, yes. Did Red Scorpions and Carcharodons get chapter rules? We went over that, uh, Aslan, but they recommended you use set rules from the codex for them. But it's a recommended, so you can kind of do whatever you want there. Um, every character, excluding vehicles, so no vehicles, that has a space of warlord trait, can attempt to complete a deed during the battle. Doing so will gain a saga. Each deed and each saga is associated with a specific warlord trait. So a character accomplishes the warlord trait's deed, and then at the end of the phase, they gain the associated saga for the rest of the battle. So they've now sort of associated the sagas with the warlord traits, which is a way of balancing them in a way. Uh, so you can also have that stratagem too. So Beast Slayer is that one, has the Beast Slayer saga. So if you kill a vehicle or monster, you have an aura of six inches, and each time a model in a unit within six, you add plus one to wound. So plus one to wound aura if you if you uh, destroy a vehicle or monster. Wolfkin, so that's this one, which is the D3 extra attacks. Any enemy model was destroyed, you get a six inch aura. Um, everybody within every core unit within six always counts as having charged for shock assault. So they basically get plus one attack within six. Warrior Born, which is the always strike first. At the start, or it's an aura of six inches. Core units within uh, six and within engagement range, always fight first. So uh, aura of always fight first. Hunter, which is plus one to advance and charge. You have to successfully charge. And core units within six uh, are eligible to declare a charge which they advanced. So that's cool. So it gives all core units advance and charge within six, and while a uh, and a swift hunter ability unit within six can declare charge in which they fell back. So things like um, like bikes and jump packs and stuff like that. So I think that's pretty neat. Aura of Majesty. At the start of your command phase, uh, you have to be an objective marker that's more than six inches away from your deployment zone. <laughs> while a core unit is within six inches of this model. Uh, you automatically pass morale tests, so it makes things fearless. Cool. And that's with the Aura of Majesty. And then Resolve of the Great Bear. This model loses any wounds, <laughs> while the friendly core unit within six, um, you, they all get a six up feel no pain. Nice. I like that one. Six up feel no pain for everybody within six if they're a core unit. Cool. Then we go to the relics. Now, a couple of changes to the relics for sure. And you can proc these for 2 CP? Yes. So if you have a character that doesn't have a saga or a warlord trait, right? Complete one of the deeds. So kill a vehicle or kill a model in close combat or do a charge or um, uh, be within engagement range or, or be within an objective marker that's six inches away or lose a wound you can proc 2 CP to automatically get the Saga. So any of your characters takes a wound, and they don't have a Warlord trait, you can spend 2 CP to give them the Saga of the Bear, right? And all of a sudden, everybody has a 6-up feeling of pain around them. So that's pretty That's pretty neat, actually. Shadizo, hello. Hello, Shadizo. Does the Relic rule state they can use any Relic from Space Marine Corps? 
Yeah, you can use any. So, if your army is led by a space of world, you can, when mustering your army, give one of the following relics to the Fang, to character model, instead of giving them a relic from the Space Marine Codex. These are considered to be chapter relics, etc., etc. So, you can, you can mix and match. You can take a relic from the Space Marine book or take a relic from here. So, um, Colonel Crenshaw. So much OP? Eh, it's different. It's still Space Marines. They're still really strong. So, the Armor of Russ is now... You pick one unit within engagement range, and that cannot fight. So there's no aura to it anymore. It's you have to be in base-to-base -base contact. Well, well, one inch, which is engagement range. Was that the same as before? Maybe. I think it was three inches before. The Wolfenstone. You can reroll charge range uh, charges for every within six for core units within six, and once per battle, you pick one unit within six, and they. They get an additional hit from the Savage Fury on unmodified fives. So once per battle, you can pick a unit to have exploding fives in close combat. Okay, that's a little different than just plus one attack, or what it used to be. Fireheart is a three damage, 18-inch pistol. Black Death is a power axe that's plus two strength, minus two, one damage, and it does D6 additional attacks, for sure. The Mountain Breaker Helm... You can pick an enemy within one or two plus, take D3 mortal wounds. You like headbutt people with a with a helmet. The Storm's Eye, you can basically every you do a psychic power and then everybody within twelve inches or every unit within twelve inches takes a mortal on a four plus. Sure. Uh, the pelt of Beowulf is one of my favorites. Every time a melee attack is made against the bearer, subtract one from the hit and wound roll. This relic, the Pelt of Beowulf, amazing. Minus one to hit the character, minus one to wound the character. On like a Thunderwolf or something like that. Like, that is actually quite, quite powerful, if you ask me. And then we have the uh, the special issue war gear ammunition. But you've got the Adamantium Mantle, which is the same. Artif which is a five up, feel no pain. Artificer armor, two up armor, five up invulnerable. Mastercrafted weapon, plus one damage, but it's considered to be a chapter relic. So you can't like bonus it up with stuff that can't bonus chapter relics. Digital weapons make an additional attack. If you hit, you just do a mortal wound. Morkai's teeth bolts does the exact same. It's a bolt weapon. Roll the hit. If you roll the hit an enemy unit, then everything gets reroll once to hit against it. And it's everything. All friendly. So if you have allied units or anything like that, the Morkai's teeth bolts work the same. Wolftail Talisman. Um, four up feel no pain against mortal wounds. Whoop. In the psychic phase. Frost weapon, pick a weapon, basically like Mastercraft a weapon, but you give it plus one strength, plus one damage. And if you give it to a lightning close, each lightning close plus one strength, plus one damage, which is awesome. So frost weapon is like a souped up version of Mastercraft a weapon. Runic weapon, plus uh, you can give it to a librarian, add one to deny the witch, cool. And one of the weapons adds plus one to strength. So you can give plus one strength to your runic weapon for librarian, plus one to denies as well. So that one is probably going to be quite popular as well if you take the psychers. Now, the Tempestus discipline has changed a little bit as well. And then we'll get to the secondary choices that they have for, uh, for match play rules as well. Because those are going to be definitely interesting. Does the armor of rust prevent them from fighting at all or just to fight last? So... Uh, you can select one enemy unit with an engagement range. That unit is not eligible to fight this phase until all eligible units from your army have done so. So they still get to fight. They just fight right at the end. I might need to get some space for my imps. Sounds like fun. Definitely is fun. So you can definitely you know, buff up your stuff if you want to do it that way, which is awesome. Little little sip of water here. Hmm. Okay. So living lightning... 18 inches like a smite, so it goes off on a 6. Uh, its closest unit does D3 mortal wounds, and then we roll a D6, and then the next closest visible unit within 6 inches suffers 1 mortal wound or D3 mortal wounds on a 5 or a 6, on a 2 plus, basically. Murderous Hurricane, um, this is really good. I like this psychic power. So... It's a, you select an enemy unit with an 18. That unit cannot fire Overwatch unless they're entirely within the terrain feature. So if they're not entirely within the terrain, they can't Overwatch you. And 
they fight last. That's amazing. And that's if they're in terrain or not. They just they just don't fight. They fight lost. Like you can psychic power fight lost. So good. 18 inches for that. That is an incredible power. Goes off on a 6. On a 6. Crazy. Crazy. And it starts and until the start of your next psychic phase. You know how powerful that is? That means that it you can cast it on an enemy unit. And then they can't fight first. And then what happens is if it's a protracted combat, like they can't get picked, right? It's so good. Anyway, going hard on the activation wars. Yes, definitely. Tempest Wrath uh, affects an enemy unit within 24. Uh, minus one to hit. So you can just 24 inches pick an enemy unit. They're minus one to hit. It's pretty, pretty awesome. It's great that it's 24. And it's any unit. You just minus one to hit and shooting in close combat. Instincts Awoken. Yeah, pick a friendly unit within 18. Um, you make the Assault Doctrine active. Remember, you have a stratagem to do that as well, but you have a Psychic Power that can do it as well. And on an unmodified Wound Roll of a 6, AP is plus 1, which is cumulative with the Assault Doctrine, which is cool. So you can cumulative AP, an extra AP, plus you count them as being an Assault Doctrine. Hasn't Drukari goodness been covered yet? Yes, Matt Large. 100%. We already went through the Forgeal stuff. And it's back in the back. If somebody wants to timestamp it for him, that would be great. But thank you so much for tuning in. If you're just tuning in, we're going over the Space Wolf book. We've still got the Death Watch book to go over. So sit back, relax, get a cup of coffee, cup of tea. I've been doing this for three hours now. So I do it for you. So if you'd like to like, share, subscribe, hit me up on uh, Patreon or Twitch or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram. You know. And I don't just play Drukari, by the way. I play lots of armies. Space Wolves. <laughs> Stormcaller. Every unit within six inches of the Psyker has light cover. So pretty decent. So plus one to saves, essentially. And Jaws of the Werewolf is different. You basically roll a d6 for each unit um, on a six plus. For each model in a unit, on a six plus, they take a mortal. But if you roll a nine or more on the Psychic test, it's on a five plus. So that's pretty neat. I kind of like that a lot. So it's like just mortal wounds. Like a... Like a, like a mortal wounds per unit or whatever. Drink some water, man. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So chapter approved rules. If every model in your army... A, ex excluding agents or unaligned has a space of keyword and your warlord has a space of keyword you can if you're playing match play pick these missions like all our secondary objectives each of the secondary objectives below has a category and they follow all the normal rules for secondary objectives you cannot choose more than one from each category and cannot score more than 15 points from each secondary so you have a purge and you have no mercy no respite categories so, glory kills. Um, two points if, a if any character units were destroyed by Space Wolf units during this battle round. If none were destroyed, but a character unit suffered three or more wounds, you score one point. You score three points if any monster units were destroyed by a Space Wolf unit for your army during the battle round. If no monster units were destroyed, but a monster unit suffered three or more wounds, um, suff you score one point. A character monster unit cannot count towards both parts of this objective. You must select whether to treat that as a character or a monster for the purpose of this objective. Sure. Heroic challenge. So, I, eh, it's okay. If you're playing against, like, super monster list or super character list, sure. Then you have the heroic challenge, which is, at the start of your first command phase, you select a character to issue a challenge. And your <laughs> opponent must select a character to accept the challenge. If either player does not have a character, they must select their warlord. You score five points at the end of the battle for each of the following conditions that have been achieved. One, the model that accepted the challenge was destroyed. Five points. The model that accepted the challenge was destroyed as a result of a melee attack. Another five points. The model that accepted the challenge was destroyed as a result of a melee attack made by the model that issued the challenge. <laughs> five points. 
I challenge you to single combat. I'll accept the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Would be really fun for like a jump pack character that can like jump over and get to like a challenge. You just have to make that character really killy to be like, you, you're 15 points. Come here. <laughs> uh, and the cool thing is it's at the start of the command phase. Which means that an opponent can't just hide the character in Deep Strike or something like that. Like, it has to be somebody on the table. Uh, can Space Wolf secondary from Wolf and one from Generic Marine Book? Um, you can pick one of the... Yeah, so you could pick, you could pick a Space Marine one and a Space Wolf one. As, as, it's, as it stands here, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. You can pick one of these as a Space Wolf one, and if you're a Space Marine player, then you can probably collect, pick one from the Space Marine Codex. Um, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. That's kind of neat. Uh, so then you have a Mighty Saga, No Mercy Respite. If you select this objective, you score two points at the end of each battle round for each of the following achieved by your Space Wolf's Warlord for a max of five points per battle round, basically. An enemy monster or vehicle loses any wounds as a result of an attack made by this warlord. Two points. An enemy monster or vehicle is destroyed as a result of a melee attack made by this warlord. Two points. That's for vehicles, too. That's really good. An enemy character is destroyed as a result of a melee attack made by this warlord. Two points. Five or more models were destroyed as a result of attacks made by this warlord. Two points. At the start of your command phase, this warlord is within range of an objective marker that is wholly within your opponent's deployment zone. Two points. Like, that's actually pretty good, considering your space with warlords are going to be, like... Uh, is the lion and the wolf still in the codex? No, it is not. Uh, that's gone. Uh, it might be in the Crusade rules, though. I haven't checked the Crusade rules. But today, we're not really going to go over many of the Crusade rules. Yeah, we can kind of, I'll kind of skim them, skim over them for sure. Um, and then Warrior Pride. So this is a progressive one. Three points at the end of your turn if two or more space with units from your army are within engagement range of any enemy units or have completed a charge move this turn. So if you charge with two units every turn, or you're in combat with two units every turn, at the end of your turn, you just get three points. So that one's, like, decent. You're going to be in combat a lot of the time. This one is pretty cool. I like the Mighty Saga one. And Space Wolf players are going to love it. So we accept the challenge straight out of Rock and Roll Nightmare. That's a little sad. Yeah, sure. It's a little sad. They have changed a few things here or there. So T includes water, you know. That is also true definitely need some tea although i had coffee earlier which is why i'm very chatty so we have the the crusade rules right so you have your crusade stuff it basically says if you have a successor then all your successors are space rules for a crusade so you've got your separate agendas which is like um an audacious boast you know etc etc trophy circling wolves etc you've got your requisitions you can actually requisition a lone wolf that's part of the crusade rules now um, you have pock bonds and stuff and make like your packs like have some cool rules the tail of the wolf and the lion is in the crusade rules um you can select an infantry or biker model that is not a character um, add one to the attacks characteristic and gains the following ability each time this model makes an attack against dark angels add one to the hit and wound roll <laughs> awesome so that unit is like renowned to not like dark angels uh then we have the battle traits uh sure the vehicles and priests and stuff you got the deeds of making for your characters you got your crusade relics the spear of russ what what that's a crusade relic? You can find the Spear of Russ? Get out of here. Get out of here. You wanna oh, you wanna know what it is? Okay. It's a shooting weapon, 18 inch assault one, two times two, minus four, six damage. Or a melee weapon, times two, minus four, three damage. Um, and if your space was units within six inches, you a minus one to hit in melee. If yeah, cool. So it's like nice. I like it. That's cool. It exists in some form. It does. Then we have the data sheets. Ready? Logan Grimnar in two forms. Pretty standard stuff. He is essentially a chapter master, so gets all the chapter master stuff. Um, uh, 
they he doesn't have to do his deed. He already has his deed, which makes everybody fearless around him. So he's like a, got a six-inch fearless bubble, basically. He has the right to battle. He has a four-up invul save. His uh, sled is 14 wounds with a 10-inch move. Sure. And him on foot. I like him on foot better because he can't be shot. Nial Stormcaller. He adds plus one to his psychic tests, which is good. You can reroll deny the witch test, so he's good at that too. He has an invul save, and he knows two powers. Nightwing is just a 12-inch three three shot gun. Star for the Stormcaller. This is a plus three, so it's a strength seven weapon, and he has a bolt pistol. Sure, cool. Beyond the Fell Handed, Super Dreadnought character Dreadnought with eight wounds. He has a minus one damage. He has a five up feel no pain. He does, he has like a captain reroll buff. So captain rerolls for core units around. And he still has like all of his weapons. Uh, Hellfrost, Multimelta is pretty much the same. Um, and he doesn't give you any extra command points anymore, which is a bit of a shame. Mm -hmm. Arjack Rockfist is there. Arjack has a three plus invulnerable save. He has a special storm shield called the Anvil Shield. 3-up invul save. Pretty neat. And he has the lieutenant rerolls. And his 3 damage base and minus 3 AP. So his thunder hammer is still minus 3 AP. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you hit a character or monster in shooting or combat, plus it's not minus 1 to hit, but if you hit a character or monster with his thunder hammer, it's 4 damage, not 3 damage. So I think Adrak Rockfist is a pretty neat, snazzy character. Ulrich the Slayer is like the main wolf priest. Uh, he can cast two powers. And he does have a Slayer's Oath. So if he kills a monster or character, then until the end of the battle, his litanies are automatically successful. So you kill a monster or character with Ulrich, he just automatically passes all of his litanies, which is pretty cool. And people can use his leadership. Uh, Ragnar Blackmane still has about the same amount of stuff. Still reroll charges. Um, still has reroll ones to hit because he's a captain. Uh, still has consolidation of additional three. He has a four up invul. And when he shock assaults, he has three attacks. So he goes up to ten attacks. His form frost fang is still two damage. Of course, you can't. There's no like touch of the wild anymore. Uh, you've got like that that. That, so you can't really like super hype him up in terms of like a bazillion attacks anymore, but still pretty good. Uh, Krom is in there. He is a right to battle. So he's a captain. Um, and the enemy units within three minus one from combat attrition. So if you want to do like combat attrition stuff, there's ways to do that. Herald Death Wolf, cavalry and beast within six inches uses leadership. Um, right to battle, so real ones to hit for core, and mantle of the troll king, minus one damage to everything that attacks him. So that's pretty cool. And he has a storm shield. So death wolf is pretty snazzy. Canis wolfborn still in there as well. He has uh, cavalry beasts and chariot units within six. Well, uh, each time it fights, you can make plus one attack with teeth. Or claws or crushing teeth or claws so plus one attack to basically the wolves on like your mounts and stuff which is cool he can heroically be within six which is nice and uh, he fights first if there are any characters within an inch of him basically wolf guard battle leader is basically uh, a lieutenant reroll once to wound in close combat doesn't change he's in terminator armor then you have a wolf lord on a Thunderwolf, so pretty standard stuff there. Rights of battle, four up invul save, can take a bunch of gear. I think it's 170 points for Thunder Hammer Storm Shield if you want to do it that way. But you can kind of mix and match um, with a whole bunch of different stuff. Wolfgar Battle Leader on a Thunderwolf if you wanted to do that as well. So tactical precision for real ones to wound. The Blood Claws all went up to two wounds. Uh, they're pretty. They have the headstrong and berserk charge, so they kind of have to declare charge against close stuff, and they get extra attacks when they charge. It, you know, you want to put a wolf pack leader in there just to keep them around. You know what I mean? Uh, although the wolf pack terminator armor leader, it's good. Yeah, it's decent to have a terminator armor unit in there. Gray hunters 
still have lots of weapon options. They have, uh, yeah, they are core, they're wolf guard, they're you know, all this cool stuff. A wolf guard themselves. Lucas the trickster is kind of cool. Um, you can reroll hit rolls for blood claws, swift claws, sky claws. Yeah, within six inches. So he's like a super chapter master for blood claws. Yeah. T Lapv did Ragnar go up in points? He went. He's one thirty. So whatever that is right now. We'll go through points right now in a second. We'll get to the points. Wolfguard Terminators, uh, lots of different options as well. I think they're 33 points base. The Hounds of Morkai with a unit that were, you know, shown off. They are an elite choice. They're basically anti psyker Reavers, basically. Um, Wolfen did take a bit of a hit. They can't advance and charge anymore, which is a bit of a shame. They did keep their fight on death. Um, they can't do actions, and they always count as basically an assault doctrine, and they always count as charging, so they actually have plus one attack, and they always have exploding sixes, no matter what turn it is, or if they charged or not. And uh, units can, within 12 inches can like, or within six inches can re-roll charges, unless they're blood claws, and they have combination. Wolf and Dreadnought is about the same. Minus one damage on him though, just stock standard as well. Can you give it... And the Blizzard Shield is just a 4-up invul save. It's not like a Storm Shield. So it doesn't give you the plus 1 armor. It's just a 4-up invul. Um, Murder Fang. Still a character. Still lots of damage. Mm -hmm. Can't have a Warlord. Minus 1 damage on it. Can reroll charges. And when it charges, makes 3 additional attacks. Nice. Which is pretty neat. Cyber Wolves have their own unit entry. They're two wound wolves, basically. With minus one AP on their three attacks. Sure. And then Fenrisian Wolves can be up to 15 strong, plus a Cyber Wolf. Or one of them can be a Cyber Wolf. And then Thunder Wolf Cavalry, which I think you're going to be seeing a lot. Because they are a decent amount of points, four wounds. They can advance and charge still. Um, you know, they have lots of attacks. They have lots of weapon options, in my opinion excellent for them so mm -hmm. yep still have death watch right after this sky claws two wounds each long fangs two wounds each they lo you know they have the signium so they're basically like devastators nothing crazy um uh, other than that they can add like a terminator person into the unit or whatever. So they're a little different. They still have a bit of their flavor. Nothing super crazy. Then, of course, the two Storm Fangs. Uh, the Melta's got the new Melta rule. The Hellfrost Destructor is six straight damage and the focus. So just six damage base. I don't know if that was uh, what it was before. So it's Blast, Heavy D3, just six damage. Wow, that's actually really cool. Um, uh, Melta, Last Cannon, the Twin, Hellforce Cannon, the Focused Hellfrost Cannon on the Stormwolf is just 4 damage base. Heavy 2, just 4 damage, minus 4. Just straight up 4 damage. That's really cool. I like that. I like it when... I like the fact that there's a lot of stuff that has like set damage numbers now. It's a lot less like D6 and you know D3s and whatever. Uh, weapon profiles seem about the same. Then we have point values. So, Arjak, 120, Bjorn... 175 with the last cannon 195 canis 120 death wolf 140 chrom 100 logan 155 honest storm rider 180 so it's not actually that different points wise storm caller 140 ragnar 130 ulrich 110 wolfguard leader 85 in terminator armor thunder wolf wolfguard leader 95 and then a bunch of gear they can take thunder wolf lord 110 with a bunch of gear blood claws are 18 each um, Grey Hunters are 18 each. Um, Hounds of Morkai, 22. Lucas is 80. Murderfang is 150 with any options. Wolfguard, 19. Terminators, 33. Wolfen, 25, but with a Thunder, with a Thunder Hammer Storm Shield, they're 41. So they're 25, like, without anything. They did lose their Feel No Pain, too, I think, which is also a, bu a bummer. Wolfen Dreadnought, 120. Cyber Wolves from Razor Wolves, who uses those? Nobody. Uh, Thunderwolf Cavalry, 45 points. And then a like a Power Fist is 10 points, and a Thunder Hammer is 15 points. So like 55 points per model. 
And if you're doing a Storm Shield, it's five points, so like 60 points a model with a Storm Shield, essentially. Maybe too early to judge, but is the Wolf Dex balanced rather than the Codex Creep or the Stock Marine book? Um, it's different. Like, it's just, like, it, it, it doesn't have some of the stuff that made it stupid earlier, but it's still really strong. Like, you're, you're talking Space Marines, first of all, and secondly, you're talking Space Wolf Space Marines, right? So they get some cool stuff that make them very dedicated anti uh like, uh, dedicated, um, and then we have the Glossary. That's the Space Wolf stuff. So it's like 60 points for to 65 points for a like a Thunderwolf cavalry. I think the addition of like the way the sagas work and stuff are a little different than they were before. Um, I think you're still going to see a gazillion like characters and stuff like that. Somebody please put a timestamp in the chat for this moment right here because right now we're going to go for the Death Watch. This is the last book that we're going to be covering today. And I'm excited. Death Watch Space Marines, probably one of the more um, like esoteric chapters. The fact that it got sort of like amalgamated into the uh, basic uh, Space Marine codex is pretty cool, right? Changes stuff a little bit. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in, everybody. Make sure you are liking that button and clicking it. Make sure you're subscribing if you haven't already, following me on Twitch, sharing it with your friends and or checking the links uh, to head, to head on over to Patreon and all that stuff to support the channel. A Death Watch. We're definitely watching this codex. Okay. Codex supplement. Death Watch. Let's make sure I don't show off the uh, my code again. <laughs> I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way. The hard way. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, just had to make sure I fix the chats here. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Death to the Xenos, they say. What have the Xenos ever done for us? Death Watch isn't a chapter. It's a joint task force where you do a tour of duty. And then, yo, oh, I, I know how the Death Watch works, but it's cool that it's part of, like, the Space Marine Codex, right? Basically, considering, like, all Space Marines sort of, like, send, like send members of their chapter to be a part of it, right? Which is kind of cool. Um, I love, I love, look at this, look at this. Re-engineered Eastern Fringe Artillery Purifications. Look at it, it's literally a towel like pulse rifle. Hilarious, with a Necron, like Gauss flayery style thing at the back. That's hilarious. That's so funny. They literally repurpose all the like Xenos tech. Oh, they feel so good. Like it, fe like these are like it's almost like like textured. I love it. Codex supplements die, Xeno you know, scum. Yes. <laughs> yep, that's exactly how that works. Oh no, Drukari, what are they doing fighting you? Well, that makes sense, I guess. Mm -mm -mm. Tau, psh, everybody hates Tau. Tyranids, psh, Tyranids, Gene Steel Cult. Psh. Cult. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Not everyone does. I see a lot of people asking for Death Watch successor chapters. Yeah, that's not kind of how that works. <laughs> Combat Patrol Detachment Abilities. The rules. So Death Watch Detachments is the is one that only includes models with the Death Watch keyword, except for you know assassins and stuff like that. Cool. Um, mission tactics. So, this is a huge change from the Space Marine Codex, and I really like it. So, normally in the Space Marine Codex, you have the Devastator Doctrine, Tactical Doctrine, Assault Doctrine. And they go Devastator first, then two Tacticals, then three Assaults. Death Watch can pick, if you're running just a Death Watch army, can pick at the start of the battle round what combat doctrine they want for that battle round. You can only use a Devastator Doctrine once. You can only use a Tactical Doctrine twice. You can only use Assault Doctrine three times. But you can pick and choose in whatever turn you want each of these doctrines to take to take place. Which gives you very nice tactical flexibility. Somebody got too close to you or infiltrated up a bunch of stuff. You know, first battle round, pick Assault Doctrine, go charge them. Right? Um, if somebody's really, like, and then in the mid-game, when somebody's running away and you need to shoot them, Devastator Doctrine. Like, I really, really like that rule 
as well. So that is really neat. Um, so that's cool. I like that. So basically, that's their special rule. They get to pick and choose when they use their doctrines throughout the game. Super powerful. So hey, let's look at some stratagems here. Death to the alien. In the fight phase, Death Watch unit selected to fight. If it's in game's range of a Tyranid, Eldari, Orc, Necron, or Tau, add one to attacks. So plus one attack in close combat when fighting Xenos. It's pretty straightforward and really powerful one CP. Pronosticating Volley. Death Watch until the end of the phase, in the shooting phase. Shooting against Eldari, ignore any hit and or ballistic seal modifiers. Now, this is where a couple of little red flags have come up for me. Because uh, there's a lot of this stuff saying you can ignore any hit roll and ballistic skill modifiers for that attack. Remember, hit rolls can only be modified for plus one, minus one. However, I've seen a lot of this ballistic skill, weapon skill modifiers. Which means, what if like that's going to be the new, like, you know, a LATOC? Where it's like, if you shoot at a LATOC, it's minus one ballistic skill. Like, your ballistic skill counts as minus one. Right, so because of that, I'm starting like to see like these are just little things that are going in my mind, right? Um, so maybe we'll see, we'll see if that like is a thing, but maybe that's a, a hint to sort of like how some of the dynamics will work in the next codexes. That's just me guessing. I have no idea. If I am right, tell me that I'm right later. Uh, synaptic severance. So this is against Tyranids. Um, Use it in the shooting a fight phase when a Death Watch army is using to shoot a fight. Each time a model makes an attack against a Synapse unit, an unmodified rule of a 6 to hit automatically wounds the target. So you get auto 6s to hit in shooting or fighting against Synapse. Pretty nice. Adaptive Tactics. Death Watch. When your Watchmaster is on the battlefield, change the role for your Xenos Hunter chapter tactic. You can only use a stratagem once. Nice. Change the battlefield role selected for the purpose of Xeno Hunter's chapter tactic for your army. See Codex Space Marines. So you can use it once. You can change your Xeno's Hunter uh, role. Nice. That's pretty cool. Aloha, Vigo. What's going on? Maybe a transhuman mechanic with ballistic skill, weapon skill. Yeah, right? Like you can only, you know, you your, your weapon skill, ballistic skill counts as like one less or whatever. I thought that might be good. Atonement through honor. Death Watch stratagem. In your opponent's charge phase, select a Death Watch unit that has a black shield. That unit can heroically intervene as if it were a character. Nice. One CP heroic intervention, that's always super powerful. As long as you have a black shield in the unit, excellent. Sanction of the Black Vault. Uh, before the battle, when you have a warlord, death, select a Death Watch model in your army with a sergeant. So give a sergeant a special gear for a CP. Okay, that's pretty standard. And uh, Death Watch character, pick another character to be a Warlord for another CP. So that's pretty standard. You can use that once as well. 2 CP, Stem the Green Tide. I'm assuming that's against Orcs. Um, in the charge phase, after an Orc unit has declared a charge against one or more Death Watch units, the Death Watch units that were selected as target can fire Overwatch. <laughs> Until the end of the phase, if any models from that Orc unit are destroyed, subtract two from charge rolls. So, it's like it was before, makes orc charges harder. That's kind of cool. Priority Doctrine Adoption. Use it in your command phase. Select one unit from your army, then select one combat doctrine. Until the start of the next command phase, that unit gains the bonus of the combat doctrine you selected instead of the active combat doctrine. You can only use a stratagem if every unit in your army has Death Witch keyword. That's cool. So you can literally say, oh, I have a Devastator Squad or a unit that I need to be in Devastator Doctrine the entire game. One CP, you're in Devastator Doctrine the entire game, even if I'm mixing and matching my doctrines. That is, I like stuff like this because it means that you can have like dedicated units to be like, I need you to be an Assault Doctrine no matter what. So I'm going to have this on my back pocket to make sure that you're in Devastator Doctrine and stuff like that as well. Targeting Scramblers. Death Watch. Use this stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase against Tau. After the unit has resolved its shooting attacks, remove more marker-like counters from that Death Watch unit. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no marker lights for you. <laughs> 
That surprisingly enough, that actually can make a big difference against tower shooting. Uh, overkill, death watch against necrons. Uh, use it in the shooting or fight phase against the necron unit. The opponent must subtract one from reanimation protocols as a result of those attacks. Okay, so it's only one time. You can like make sure that they have minus one to their reanimation rolls. That's actually really good. It's not as like crazy because reanimation procs like or gets activated every time a unit shoots. But if you have a unit, say like, you know, Death Watch plasma inceptors come down with their plasma guns and they're like overkill. And you're like and you, you know, shoot thirty times into this big Necron warrior blob and make them only get up on sixes instead of fives. I think that's a that can make a big, big difference. So <laughs> Thank the gods that none of in my study. Yeah, exactly. Well, Death Watch have some really cool stuff for uh, like anti psychers. I mean, anti um, uh, anti um, Xenos. Like they did lose the they did lose the ability to shoot at like Eldari if they like because Eldar used to like I move close to you and they'd be like ha ha interrupt and they'd shoot you. That was so annoying. So so annoying. Um, Brotherhood veterans. Stratagem in your command phase, select a Death Watch unit, then select a chapter tactic or successor tactic. Until the end of the turn, models in that unit have that chapter tactic or successor cha tactic instead of the Xenos Hunter. What? For 2 CP, I can make my Death Watch unit Black Templars? For 2 CP, I can make my Death Watch unit Ultramarines? For two CP, I can make my black te my Death Watch unit white scars. That's amazing. That is that is amazing. That that's probably one of the strongest stratagems in this codex. That is awesome. You can pick and choose, and you can also pick and choose one of the successor traits too. Like you can pick successor traits out of that. Like the crazy ones, like extra hits and whirlwind of rage, and that is. That's nuts. Like, you're going to have to know what you can do, but that is crazy. That is that is crazy. Okay. Enough enough super ranting about that. Disruptive launch. 1 CP in the movement phase uh, when a Death Watch jump pack, an Indomitor kill team unit that contains an Inceptor, or a Proteus kill team unit that contains a Vanguard veteran, falls back. That unit is able to shoot even though it fell back. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. People will pay 3 CP not to make them Imperial Fists. <laughs> to not make them Imperial Fists. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know. Crazy. Teleportarium. 1 CP. Uh, select a Death Watch Infantry, Dreadnought, or Biker unit. And you can teleport them. You can only use it once unless you're playing Strike Force, in which case you can use it twice. So, 2,000 point game, you can teleport two units for 1 CP each. Relentless Assault. Use the stratagem in your movement phase when a Death Watch biker kill team unit that has a biker outrider unit falls back. It's even, it's uh, you can charge even if it fell back. Cool. That's neat. Shroud Field, Corvus Black Star, start of the first battle round. Until the end of the battle round, that unit cannot be selected as a target for range attacks. Oh. You can have a Corvus Black Star be immune to shooting on the first battle round. That's really good. <laughs> That's actually really awesome. Clavis. Use a stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select a vehicle, an enemy vehicle unit within one inch of a watchmaster. That unit suffers D3 bottles. Okay. Until the end of the phase, you can't fight until you fight last against a vehicle. That's just one CP for D3 models and fight last. Just like straight up. That's really interesting. Um... Special issue loadout. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase when you select a Death Watch infantry unit to shoot. Until the end of the phase, bolt weapons, excluding bolt sniper rifles, without the special issue ammunition ability, gain the special issue ammunition ability, and their type is changed to heavy one. Oh, for 2 CP, you can just have like a Primaris unit get special issue ammunition, but they're all heavy one weapons instead of, like, anything else. That, you know what? That's pretty cool. So they have some really cool, like, very techy options with their stratagems. That's really interesting. 
so then you have your kill teams. Now, kill teams is like a new sort of thing that you can do with your armies. And I think the kill teams... Oh, here we go. Here we have the kill teams. Creating a kill team. You can create a kill team. A kill team is comprised of models from different data sheets. Uh, it's between 5 and 10 models. Uh, war gear can be different. Um, point values, keywords. They have Imperium, Adeptus Starters, Death Watch, and the kill team will have a keyword for that. Um, each one will have a fixed power value or whatever as well. That's interesting. Now, they, they're not for Crusade rules, I'm assuming. Mixed unit. So it shows, like, for Bolt of Discipline, what your big... St so, special issue ammuni ammunition is... Uh, you can either do Dragonfire Bolts. You don't get the benefits of cover. So that's benefits of any cover. Hellfire Rounds. Um, add plus one to the wound roll. Uh, not against vehicle or titanic, so just plus one to wound. They've changed the way that special issue ammunition works. Crack and bolts. Add six inches to the range and improve the AP by one. And it is cumulative by combat doctrines. And vengeance rounds. Um, add one to the damage. So vengeance is plus one damage. Kraken is plus one is plus six inch range plus one AP. Hellfire is plus one to wound against non vehicle or titanic. Dragonfire is no benefit of cover. So no minus one to hit, and no light cover or anything like that, which is cool. I like that. I like the. I like that's just like very straightforward. You're not taking like crazy mortal wounds and stuff like that as well. And you've got like all this stuff too. So you got like the special death watch kill team. You've got all this stuff as well. Um, you got all the models like points per model. So if you want to do a Proteus kill team, a Fortis kill team an Indometer kill team, a Spectrus kill team. There are four kill teams you can use. And I'm going over these first because what it says here is you have sp kill team specialisms. So if you can upgrade your kill team units to have a specialism for points, and these will actually have like a special rule. What the? There's so many layers to this. This is nuts. This is nuts. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Raven guy, you'll have to. Hey, thanks for this resub, buddy. Yeah, I already covered. Um, I already covered Forge World. If you just rewind back, I've been at it since six a.m. So, um, uh, uh, so oh, I can just just stick around, and I'll and I'll just go over the Mastodon right at the end here as well. So that's cool. So, Aquila, Dominatus, Fura, Malleus, Purgatus, Venator, right? With the exception of Kill Team Crassius. Cassius, sorry. Uh, oh, but this is for... Oh, this is a Battleforge rule. Okay, so he's a Battleforge, yeah. An army that's led... Uh, an army and a Crusader army cannot contain more than one Kill Team with the same specialism. Cool. So, Kill Team Cassius. That unit is upgraded to have the Aquila specialism. Okay. So the Aquila Specialism is 25 points. After selecting a battlefield role for the Xenos Hunter chapter tactic, you select an additional battlefield role. Until the end of the battle, each sound model makes an attack against that. So they basically get reroll wounds against two different things. Nice. Venator is also 25 is Venator is 25 points. Each time a model in this unit makes an attack against an enemy unit with the fast attack or flyer battlefield role, reroll ones. If you select the fast stack or fly battle roll for their Xenos Hunter chapter tactic, they can re-roll wound rolls against that. What? That's really good. <laughs> Malleus uh, specialism. Each time a unit makes an attack against a heavy support, Lord of War, or dedicated transport battlefield roll, re-roll wound roll of one. If you select heavy support or dedicated transport as your chapter tactic, re-roll wound rolls. Oh, my... My Dark Eldar Venoms would not like that at all. Uh, Gwendolyn, hello from St. Louis. Hello from Canada. Hi, how are you? Thanks for sticking around and clicking that like button. Ba -doop. <laughs> Dominatus. Um, every time a model in this unit makes an attack against an elite. So that's kind of cool. So what it does is, no matter what your Xenos choice is of dedicated, like whatever battlefield role you're rerolling ones to wound against, 
they get the reroll wounds against a specific thing. So Aquila is um, two, two of them instead of one. Venator is Flyers or Fast Attack. Malleus is Heavy Support, Lord of War, or Dedicated Transport. Dominatus is Elite. And Fuhrer is Troops. And Purgatus is HQ. But if you pick that one as your roll, they get reroll wounds against those things instead of reroll ones because they're specialist kill teams. That's cool. So it's basically a way to get reroll wounds on like your kill teams for just additional points. Neat. Like against your friends that have like a specific set series of like in your local meta that you know like your opponents and what they run this is crazy powerful because you can like totally tailor your list to exactly what it is it's going to be nuts against them okay warlord traits vigilance incarnate in your command phase select a friendly core unit within six of the warlord each time you do select a battlefield roll and that model makes an attack against enemy unit with that battlefield roll Rule and Rose Rod. So you can basically change the battle if you roll or whatever. Nice. Paragon of the chapter. Select a warlord trait from the chapter warlord traits. And replace all instances of that chapter keyword with Death Watch, etc. If the warlord trait has the heraldry of one of those chapters, or other than the Crimson Fist, Black Templar, Fester, one of their successor chapters, you must select that chapter warlord trait. Note that this cannot be a chapter wall or trait found in a codex supplement. So you can literally pick like a specific Imperial Fist wall or trait, like or the, the codex Imperial Fist one, if you make your warlord with a Imperial Fist like that's cool actually. Be like, I have I'm just I'm a paragon of my chapter. I'm gonna use my own wall or trait. Thank you very much. Holy moly, Raven Guy, thank you so much. For the gifted subscriptions to Shronen, Anian, Alpha, Aslan, and Disflux. That's amazing. Really appreciate that. That's fantastic. That's really nice of you. Thank you so much. Nowhere to hide, Aura. In your command phase, select one enemy unit on the battlefield. <laughs> Until the start of your next command phase, while a friendly Death Watch core unit is within six inches of this Warlord, each time a model in that unit makes an attack against that enemy unit, it does not receive the benefit of cover. So pick a unit, they don't get the benefit of cover. That's no minuses to hit, no pluses to your saves. That's cool. Be like, you, there's nowhere to hide. <laughs> Optimized priority aura. While a friendly Death Watch core or character unit that is performing an action is within six inches of this warlord, that unit can main range attacks. Oh, that's amazing! That's really good. Units within six inches of this core units and characters within six inches of this warlord can still shoot while they do actions. That's super, that's really useful. Really, really useful. Congratulations, GW, to put stuff in like that. That's great. Castellan of the Black Vault. Give it to a, uh, when mustering your army, you can give one of the following relics to this warlord. Adamantium Mantle, Artificer Armor, Mastercraft Weapon, Digital Weapon. This is in addition to any other relics they have, and each relic must be unique. Oh, you can double up on their relics? That's really cool. Well, you can give him... That's neat, actually. You can make him super tanky, if you want. Nice. Happy Halloween! Spooky season. I don't know why people call it spooky season, whatever. No es Dia de Muertos, gringos. <laughs> The Ties That Bind. Wow, there's like three aura warlord traits in this. So they're like all about their auras. While a friendly Death Watch core unit is within six inches of the warlord, you can reroll morale tests. Okay. In your command phase, you can select one core unit within six. Until the start of your next command phase, it gains the objective secured ability. Oh, if it already has it, counts as one additional model. Oh, that's really good. Anything that gives obsec to stuff, is good. Uh, so the fact that you can get like a core unit that's not a troop choice and make them obsec is very powerful. And the ability that you can make a, a unit that is a troop double the number of wounds is even more powerful, which is great. So Chaplain Cassius has optimized priority. Okay. Codicier Natoran has nowhere to hide. Okay. And Watch Captain Artemis has vigilance incarnate. Very cool, very cool. 
relics. So a couple of relics. You know, each each unit has a decent amount of relics, which is neat. Um, so you have the Beacon and Jealous. This is a standard one for all you Death Watch fans out there. Once per battle, if you did not arrive as reinforcements in the same turn, basically, you can activate the beacon. Uh, in the reinforcement step of the moon phase, you select one friendly Death Watch infantry or biker unit that is either on the battlefield and did not arrive reinforcements or is in strategic reserves. Wait. Select one friendly death watch that is either on the battlefield and not arrive from reinforced this turn, is in a teleport unit, or is in strategic reserve. Remove that unit and set up wholly within six inches of the bearer and within nine inches of enemy models. So you can basically be like, whoop. That's cool. You can also do it on turn one, which is neat. So you can teleport a unit that you put in deep strike on turn one. Awesome. Dominus Aegis. You model with a storm shield, relic shield, or combat shield. Add one to the saving throw. Nice. Uh, while friendly Death Watch core or characters are within six inches, they have a five up invul save. Oh, five up invul save to all units within six for core or characters. That means dreadnoughts because dreadnoughts are core. That'll give them a five up invul save. Um, characters that don't have an invul save get an invul save. Um, Death Watch core units, like all the troops, get an invul save. That's that's powerful. I like that. And it's a six inch aura. That's nuts. Oseus key. Watchmaster has an aura while a vehicle, an enemy vehicle is within 12 minus 1 to hit while an enemy vehicle is within 12 minus 1 from attacks nice they're pretty decent, not as cool as it's still there boys, says Alexander Smith yes, yes it is eradicators with a 5 up invul save mm-hmm, mm-hmm Yo, oh yeah, 5 up invul save aura you know, they're like, hey Hey, are you an Iron Hands character and you give it to stuff? Well, I'll take that, please. <laughs> the Thief of Secrets. A power sword of Mastercraft power sword of Xenophase Blade. Um, invulnerable saving throws cannot be made against this weapon. Oh. <sighs> so only one damage, though. Oh, oh, except for if it you attack Tyranids, Eldari, Orcs, Necron, or Tau, it has damage too. BS is what I say. My Shadowfield does not like this weapon. <laughs> uh, the Tome of Ectoclades. Once per battle in your command phase, use the Tome of Ectoclades. Use a data sheet used by one of your opponent's army. Until the next year command phase, the bearer has a full ability. So once per battle, you get an aura of 6 inches. A core unit. Uh, reroll wound rolls. Oh, nice. It's an aura once per battle of reroll wound rolls against a specific uh, data sheet. Oh, that's amazing. That's so good. That's like the anti spam. Like, I'm looking at this going, oh, my venoms are going to hate this. <laughs> Adamantium mantle, same as any Adamantium mantle. Five up feel no pain. Mastercrafted weapon, same as any Mastercrafted weapon, plus one damage. Digital weapon, same as that. Artificer armor, same as uh, C codex base means for that. Black weave shroud. Add plus one to the toughness of the bearer. Each time the bearer will lose a wound as a mortal wound, four plus feel no pain for mortals. Cool. Spear of the first vigil. It is a spear. It is a 24-inch rapid-fire 2 strength 4 minus 1, 2 damage. So that's literally a custodian spear. And in melee, it's plus 2, minus 3, 3 damage. And the shooting profile has special issue ammunition. Okay, nice. The Soul Fortress is for a librarian only. Psychic test taken for the bearer. Ignore any and all modifiers to that test. Okay. Increase the range of the bearer's psychic hood to 24. So minus, oh nice. So minus uh, 1 at 24. Cool. Bane bolts. Oh sorry, plus 1 to the deny within 24. Bane bolts. Select a bolt weapon. You can shoot with 1 attack. Has a strength of 6, AP of 2, and damage of 3. So it's a damage 3 bolt weapon thingy. Okay, fair enough. I much prefer the Morkai bolts. Giving everybody re-roll wounds or re-roll once to wound or something. Vorkan Pattern Auspiciator. Auspicator. Yeah. The bearer has the following ability. Aura. 
core units within six. Make a ranged attack against a unit that can fly. Add plus one to hit. <sighs> My Dark Eldar army is definitely not happy about this codex. Just plus one to hit against things that can fly within six inches of this guy. Awesome. Uh, Eye of... Uh, uh, no. Artifice of Bolt Cache. Bolt weapons that the bearer is equipped with gain special issue ammunition. Nice. Eye of Abiding. Each time a bearer makes an attack, you can ignore any hit, wound roll, ballistic skill, weapon skill modifiers for that attack. Each time the bearer makes an attack, an unmodified wound roll of a six, you cannot make invulnerable saving throws against that attack. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And then you have the Xeno Purge Discipline, and then we'll go into the specialist... Uh, Nice, the specialist things, which is pretty neat. So we have the Premorphic Resonance. It's a warp charge value of 6. Uh, friendly Deathwatch unit within 18. Any Overwatch attack, hit on 5s. If they're within engagement range, it can fight first. And each time a melee attack is made, add plus 1 to the hit roll. So plus 1 to hit, always fight first in combat, and you Overwatch on 5s. <laughs> Why not add a psychic power that goes off on a six with like 50 different effects? <laughs> Fortified with contempt. Blessing. Warp charge value of six. Friendly infantry or biker unit with an 18. Doesn't have to be core. Um, until the start of your next psychic phase. Five up feel no pain. So five up feel no pain on a unit with a psychic power. That's pretty cool. Neural void. Malediction, enemy unit within 18. War charge value of 7. Subtract 1 from attacks in that unit. And each time a charge is declared for that unit, only the closest enemy... This, by the way, stupid powerful. Okay? So, pick an enemy unit within 18. And that unit is minus 1 attack. And when it charges, it can only declare the closest target as the charge target. That is crazy. That is so powerful from a technical perspective. Because you can literally put like random shit at the front and be like, well, if you're going to charge me with that crazy Space Wolf unit, that Thunder Wolf unit, or your Blood Angel unit, yeah, you can only declare this one thing as the target because it's the closest. Which means you can only attack one thing. Like, oh, that's so good. So, so good. Okay. So good rent over. Um, give a like for that rent. Psych, well, no, more like a, it wasn't really a rent. It was more like an observation. Uh, psychic cleanse. It's a witch fire power. Six value. Uh, D6 for each enemy model within nine. On a six, that model's unit suffers a mortal wound. Cool. Sure. Mantle of shadow. Blessing. Warp charge value is six. Friendly infantry unit within 12. Until the start of your next psychic phase that if that unit does not shoot or declare a charge, enemy models cannot target that unit with range attacks unless they're within 12 inches. You gave them a cloud of flies, psychic power for an infantry unit. Oh, I have, I'm going to just hold this objective forever because you cannot shoot my unit because you're not going to get within 12 inches. What? <laughs> Some of these psychic powers are effing bonkers. Bonkers. Leave a comment right now about how bonkers these psychic powers are. Because we just went over, like, all of them. Except for that, that witchfire one. That one's terrible. Busted. Bus busted. <laughs> Leave a comment right now because that shit is crazy. Okay. Uh, this is the Mantle of Shadow. Basically making a friendly infantry unit within 12 unshootable. Amazing. Are these getting a bit OP? Uh, they, they, that, that, those two psychic powers, the uh, only charge the closest thing and can't shoot me, those are probably the most obnoxious ones of the bunch. Severance. Malediction of seven. So warp charge of seven. Pick an enemy character within 18. So this targets specifically enemy characters. So that unit suffers a mortal wound. Okay, so it's a targetable mortal wound. Until the start of your next psychic phase, reduce the range of that unit's aura abilities by three. 
if the psychic test result was greater than the leadership characteristic of the character, then until the start of the next psychic phase, enemy units cannot benefit from units or abilities. That's a psychic power of I shut down your character if I roll high enough. That's also really, really good. Yeah, an unshootable flyer with a strat and an unshootable unit <laughs> after your psychic phase. Oh, gosh. That is crazy. <laughs> anyway, that's really... Like, those psychic powers. Whoa. Like, I know a lot of Space Marine players aren't taking librarians to, like, be able to take up Whore the Witch and stuff as secondary choices. But holy crap is that sci that Xeno Purge Discipline. Holy crap is that powerful. Holy crap is that powerful. Now, it does say that Psychers and Death Watch Detachments can know all their psychic powers from this, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so then we go into the secondary choices. Battlefield Supremacy, The Long Vigil. Score five points at the start of your command phase if there are no enemy units, excluding aircraft, within six inches of your deployment zone. And there is at least one Death Watch unit, excluding aircraft, from your army wholly within your deployment zone. You cannot score it in the first battle round. So if you just stop people from getting close to your deployment zone, uh, that's a lot of command points. Like, who's going to want to get up close to you if you're a space marine? That seems incredibly easy to score, and it's only three turns. However, some deployment zones are harder to do, plus it's the start of your command phase, so people could sacrifice stuff. So, uh, you know, it's not as easy as it sounds. I love the must charge closest unit power. Really dictates how your opponent moves. I know, right? It's not like they must charge, but it's if they declare a charge, they can only declare the closest target. So even if they have like four different units in range and they could easily multi charge, they can only choose the closest unit. So I don't care how many attacks your unit has, that that huge death company unit or space wolf, thunder wolf cavalry unit or whatever can only charge that one thing. And you put a little land speeder in front or something. Yeah, charge that. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> so silly. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. Purge the enemy. Cull order. If you select this secondary objective, then after both sides have finished deploying, starting with the opponent, both players alternate selecting battlefield roles, HQ, troops, etc. From the units in their opponent's army until three different battlefield roles have been selected. If your opponent's army does not include units with three battlefield rolls, select as many as possible. At the end of the battle, for each battlefield roll that was selected, score five points. If every enemy unit in your opponent's army with that battlefield roll was destroyed. So that's actually not bad. Like if somebody only has like one heavy support or one fast attack slot, right? Or one elite slot, you can be like, I'm going to pick elites. And they go, I'm going to pick troops. Right, because they have a bunch, and then you go. I'm gonna pick heavy support. Oh, you have to just kill two models. Ten points. I think that's actually that's actually pretty decent as well. That's an easy ten points, because you get to pick two, and oh no, no, your opponent gets to pick two. Okay, so it's a little less 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 important. So you get to pick one. He gets to pick two. So it depends on like how balanced of an army he's brought in, or how like like um, how skewed his army is. Watch Smart is only firstborn, right? Well, we'll check it in a second. Shadow Operations. Cripple Stronghold. If you selected the secondary, then after both sides have finished deployment, or deploying, your opponent must select one objective marker on the battlefield to be the location of the stronghold objective marker. Uh, what, uh, if, it's in your deployment, if it's in your opponent's deployment zone, it has to be that one. So, then Death Watch Infantry Units can attempt the following action. Unit can start to perform at the end of your movement phase within range of the objective marker with no enemy units within range. It's completed at the start of your next command phase. You score six points each time a unit from army does this action. And because your opponent has to do it, it's an action. Like That seems pretty terrible. I don't like stuff like that. Suffer not the alien. Score one point at the end of the battle for each enemy, Tyranid, Eldari, Orc, Necron, and Tau unit destroyed by a Death Watch unit from army during the battle. <laughs> One point for every... Ki it's literally kill points. Um, yeah, because my army is like 
12 points. Like, yeah, so if you just kill a unit, you get a point. That's actually not terrible, especially against Tau. Oh, there's like a million drone units. A million points for me. Done and done. Cool. I really like the long vigil. Uh, sorry, I really like the cull order. That's not bad. This one's pretty straightforward against like MSU, which is really good. But other than that, these aren't as good as the Space Wolf ones or the just the base Space Marine ones as well. Crusade rules, you've got your new agendas, you've got your new requisition stuff, um, your new battle traits, like nothing crazy, your master specialisms and your battle scars and whatnot, and relics. I love Crusade, I think it's one of the best ways to play. We kind of went over creating kill teams because it seems to be a key part of playing um, them. So here we have, so uh, kill teams themselves, what is their mixed unit? Um... Do they have... Are they troops? Let's say... Oh, yeah. Each kill team has a troop battlefield role. Okay, so they are troops. So they become objective secured. So you have a Proteus kill team. It's a sergeant, four veterans, and add any five of these. So you've got like Death Watch veteran, Terminator, Biker, Vanguard veteran. And then uh, you have an ability to each one. So this one, the Proteus one, veteran bikers can only use turbo boost if the unit only contains veteran biker models, okay, such as after using the combat squad, sure, and they gain uh, the following keywords: they gain the melt bomb keyword, they gain fly, they gain a terminator keyword as well. They have a power rating of seven, and then extra power rating. So that's the Proteus kill team is the biker vanguard veterans unit. Cool. The Fortis kill team is an intercessor primaris one that has intercessors and can add an assault intercessor, an outrider, a hell blaster, right? And that and they just and that's it. The Indometer kill team is a mix of a heavy of a heavy intercessor, so five heavy intercessors. They can include more heavy intercessors, an aggressor, an inceptor, an eradicator. So that's like the Gravis armor, the Gravis armor style. They have a Spectrum kill team, which is uh, like a Phobos. So Infiltrator, Infiltrator, Incursor, Reaver, Eliminator. So a Phobos unit as well. So you've got like standard, like old school Marines, Intercessor, Outrider, like old, like normal with like a mix of stuff, Indomitor kill team for the Gravis stuff, and Phobos. So that's like easy. Phobos, Gravis. Regular Primaris with like Outrider, Hell Blaster, Assault Intercessor, basically, and old school Marines. So a simple way of remembering stuff that. Fat Dingo, hey, no problem. Thanks a lot. If you like the content, make sure you leave a like, share it. If you'd like to support this content, so I do this all the time, Super Chats on YouTube, subscribe on Twitch, follow on any of the social media, or check out the Patreon link and join the Denizen community where almost 300 people People have joined the Denizen community and we're a really fun, tightly knit, positive hobby group that meets on the exclusive De Patreon uh, page and uh, do some extra content for them. And we have the Discord and we play Minecraft. There's a whole bunch of stuff we do. So if you want to be a part of that community, you can support me for as little as like three bucks a month or something like that. There's tons of tiers. I also do coaching and stuff through my Patreon. So, Christian, hey, buddy, what's going on? <laughs> I really appreciate the support, folks. I really do. Or take a Phobos kill team and add five eliminators and upgrade to the HQ hate unit. Then they can reroll their sniper shots. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. You could definitely do that, Raven guy. You could have up to five eliminators and a uh, sergeant. Plus, you could split up the kill team into, you know, two combat squads, right? Which is kind of cool. Watchmaster. Uh, he is still old school marine. Yeah, he's just a watchmaster. Has a spear. That's it. And an iron hail. And he picks a core unit to reroll. So he's a chapter master. He's a watchmaster, chapter master, basically. Captain Artemis is a captain. So reroll once to hit for core. And unstoppable champion. So he has a six up field pain. Nice. Just a basic six up field pain. Chaplain Cassius, old school marine. He knows litany of hate. Um, and he can recite one litany. He is a priest. He's a chaplain. He adds plus one to his litany roll. Nice. That's pretty good. Uh, 
It says, this data sheet is intended to represent Chaplain Cassius at an earlier point in his life than the data sheet presented in Codex Supplement Ultramarines, because Ultramarines can also take Cassius. As such, if you want to feel the thematic Death Watch army, we recommend that it does not contain both this unit and Primaris units. Sure, whatever. <laughs> but Cassius is in the Ultramarine supplement, but this is a younger Cassius. Cool. Uh, Codicer Nataran, he's a librarian. He has a battle psyker. So when he manifests smite or witch fire, add plus one to the psychic test. Nice. And he, yeah, he has a psychic code as well. And he manifests two powers and denies one. That's actually pretty neat. I like that, actually. Death Watch Veterans. So it's just like a standard Death Watch Veteran with like just your basic, uh, basic old school Marines. It's not a kill team. It's just like a tactical squad, which has a variety of different things. Not a super mix or match. It's just a troop squad that is Death Watch Veterans with a Black Shield, Watch Sergeant, and a Veteran, which can have it. The Black Shield can have two melee weapons and can have extra attacks, basically. And it is a mixed unit or it can be a mixed unit as well. Neat. I like that. So it's simple. Just Death Watch Veteran doesn't have a crazy amount. They're all infantry. If you want to build a kill team, they have their own rules. Then you have Kill Team Cassius, which is four veterans and a watch sergeant, one Terminator, one veteran biker, two Vanguard veterans. This is a specific Death Watch kill team that comes in the special box, I believe. Um, we're 300 strong now. Yowza. Yeah, so in like in combination of everything, because there's some people who don't use the Patreon, they just do it through PayPal. So they don't like they don't sign up on Patreon. They just PayPal me because they don't they don't want to sign up to Patreon. So yeah, we're about three hundred or so, like in general, like from like all the Patreons, which is pretty cool. Um, little bit under. As soon as we hit three hundred on Patreon, I'll be able to hire someone to do content with me, like on like on a semi part time basis, which would be amazing. So that's my goal. I want to do that by the end of the first quarter of next year. That is my goal for content creation, at least. Um, and I try and keep as much of my content free as possible. The less paywalls, the better. But I appreciate all the support. Um, and I love doing this. This is so much fun. And then they do have a Death Watch teleport homer. Uh, so they still have that. If you have a Terminator model, you move it. And then you can set it up back on the battlefield. So this basically adds the same teleport homer as like Terminators get. But they basically use it for the whole unit. Which is pretty neat. And it automatically passes Maratus. Cool, cool, cool. Death Watch Terminator Squad. I really like these. I, You know what I love about these new codexes? I know it's not a big deal for most. But I love that they have a picture of the units next to the unit entry. So anybody who's like a very visual person can kind of look at the unit and go, oh, okay, that's what that unit looks like. Oh, okay, that's what that unit looks like. So that especially when you go into a game or whatever and you're playing against people who you've never seen before, you can kind of be like, oh, that's what that unit looks like. Oh, that's what that unit looks like. So I think that's really cool. Okay. The marathon is almost over. Thanks for sticking around for the entire time. If you have, I really appreciate it. If not, we're almost at the end, and then we'll go over the Mastodon. Was it, Raven? Is that what you wanted me to go over real quick? And then if you have any specific questions, I'll open it up to some Q&A. So if you have any specific units or questions you want to ask, I'll quickly fire through them at the end of the stream as well here. Uh, so Terminators, basically the same. There's up to 10 Terminators with the Teleport Homer. There are three wounds each now. Um, they can have a variety of different weapons. Three we three guys can have special weapons. Nice. They can have three cyclone rocket launchers in a five-man squad. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's hilarious. I love that. Uh, veteran bike squads as well can have up to six bikers and an attack bike. So seven bikes. Sure. They can turbo boost as well. And then we have a Corvus Blackstar. Which is the super plane, which apparently can be uh, hard to kill. And it is a transport and can transport 12 infantry, but a jump pack or terminate model takes two models. And it cannot transport Primaris. But considering you can't shoot it on the first turn if you spend two CP, that's pretty damn snazzy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Devon says, Thanks, man. Really appreciate the look at Death Watch. Yeah, no problem. Yes, Sharon, I'll take a look at the. Tell us the lore! <laughs> Savior Arnarchy, the lore. Many, many years ago, when I was just a young lad, 
No, I'm not going to go over the lore right now. I, I, you know, I'm thinking of doing a, a read series. I think it would be really good. Okay, so Cassius is 100 points. Codis here is 100 points. Artemis is uh, 110. Watchmaster is 125. Uh, Terminators are 35, 33 points each. Corvus Blackstar is 180 each. The Auspex Array, what does that do? Auspex Array. Each time a bear makes a ranged attack, target not receive benefits cover. Okay, nice. Um, Infernum Hollow Launcher. Uh, each time an attack, a ranged attack made by an aircraft, add plus one to your safe throw. Okay. Infer, uh, Hurricane Bolter. Okay, but that's, that hasn't changed. Uh, 2d3, strength 5 minus 1 the rocket launcher, hurricane bolter, storm strike rockets are strength 3 heavy 1, twin assault cannon is the same, twin last cannon is the, is the same. Okay, that hasn't changed. Death watch veterans are 25 points a model, the black shield, every other point is 20 points. The veteran bike squad is 30 points a model, uh, and then kill team Cassius is 260 points for 9 models, and you just get that. That's all you get. And then the kill team specialisms, if you want to do the kill teams, you can specialize them to be Aquila, Dominatus, Fury, which is kind of cool. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There we have the weapon profiles. Nothing crazy. I love like all the crazy weapons that they use, which is really neat. And, of course, the reference chart and my code. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> do bikers have the core keyword? That's a great question, actually. Keywords are very, very... Oh, no, I didn't go... We went a little too far, a little too far over here. Mm -hmm. So, Cassius is core. Death Watch veterans are core. Veteran bike squads are not core. And Death Watch terminators are core. So, bikes are not core. Terminators are core. They are core, yes. Do Storm Bolters get special issue ammunition? Um, yes, all models in a... Um, a unit's oh sorry uh, death watch special issue ammunition it'll be an ability bikes do not have it um, terminators don't have it kill team Cassius doesn't have it what why do they not have it abilities comic shield storm shield teleport homer chaplain Cassius or is it just something that they have? Uh, it's code expressions. Others are specified to Death Watch units and right below. Each time you select Death Watch. Yeah, no, it's, I feel like it's just, it's just special issue ammunition unless it's like... Um, yeah, no, it just seems like every unit would get it. I'm pretty sure they just all have it. Like, every unit in this Death Watch army get, just gets it. It's just something that they have as, like, a stock standard thing. There we go. But that special issue ammunition is just Hellfire, Dragon Vault, Dragon Kraken, Vengeance, all that good stuff. I believe it's listed by the weapons. Oh, it's on the weapon profile. Okay, yeah, it's on the weapon profile. So Special Issue, Watch Master Ardenus does not have any. Special Issue on the Death Watch Bolt Pistol. Special Issue on the no, Kill Team Cassius. Special Issue Ammunition on the Bolt Gun. Special Issue Ammunition on the Twin Bolt Guns. Uh, the Veterans have Special Issue Ammunition Bolt Guns. Uh, veteran Bikes, their Bolt Gun does not have Special Issue Ammunition. However, the Terminators have Storm Bolter. Nope, they don't have special issue ammunition on their stuff either. Corvus Blackstar does not have special issue ammunition. So it's mostly the kill teams, like the stuff as well. So it's a weapon ability. Okay, makes sense. But I do like the fact that it's special issue ammunition. Okay, folks. That is the Death Watch Codex. It has been a marathon, 4 hours and 14 minutes, and we still have more. So if you have any specific questions, you'd like me to go over something specific, I'll do about 15 minutes of Q&A, and then I have to go have brunch, because I had coffee this morning, and I sat down after waking up early for all of you folks. Cheers to that. So let's dive in. So, Raven Guy says you wanted the gorgon i believe is that right is that is that what you wanted is that a is that a space marine thing was that a um 
Is that a Space Marine thing, or is that like a is that like a a Ghost Astrum of the Tarn thing? Okay, as for the termite drills, so termite drills went up to 180 points. Their still toughness eight. They went up to 14 wounds. Their melter cannon is five shots instead of D3, and they have three attacks in close combat that do three plus D3 damage or six plus D3 damage against vehicles. Yes, yeah, so they got a buff. It's more expensive, but extra wounds, and their weapons got a lot more like a um, lot more um uh like uh like reliable weapon options in close combat Rug rugby stew yes you did miss the reaper but because it is the q a at the end i can definitely go over the reaper one last time for you especially for everybody who tuned in late and wants me to kind of go over something real quick just for you i'm gonna do this for you okay mastodon it is uh a space marine thing mm -hmm. Mastodon, Mastodon, Master, Master, Mastodon, 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 Falchion, Mastodon, 40 power level, or 800 points, okay, 30 wounds, but this is still 3 plus, it is 2 heavy flamers, 2 last cannons, and a siege melt array, so the siege melt array is 24 inches, heavy 6, strength 8, minus 4, d6, melter rule. Sky Reaper Battery, which is heavy 8, strength 7, minus 2, 2 damage, and add plus 1 to hit against aircraft, and it's damage 4 against aircraft. And Crushing Tracks are minus 2, d3 damage, with 6 attacks hitting on 5s in close combat. It does have 2 Void Shields. So, Void Shields are a... Um, uh, it's a 5-up and vulnerable save against range attacks, and it has two void shields, which have three void points. So each void point is three damage it can take. So it can take three damage, and a void shield goes down. Three damage, and a void shield goes down. Then both shields have collapsed, and then it takes damage on its normal saves, basically. So that's what I would do. So there you go, Raven Guy, the Mastodon. 30 wounds, two up save. Basically, with lots of like crazy guns. And it carries 40 chapter infantry. Wolfen, Terminators, and Jump Packs take up two models each. Centurions take up three models each. You can transport up to two Dreadnought models at ten models each. But you cannot transport, you cannot transport Primaris, Derdeo, or Leviathan Dreadnoughts. Yes. My drills pointed appropriately. Yeah, drills are great now. Yes, yeah, so drills are cool. Um, termites did get some love. Okay, let's go over Sharonin. Says the Secutari. So they did not gain the the Forge World keyword. They kept the Titanica keyword. Um, they basically they're one of the things that didn't really change too much, to be honest. If I were to, if I were to say, uh, they didn't really change too much, in my opinion. <laughs> Custodies. Where are you? No. Custodies. Astrum Militarum. Where's the Astrum Militarum? There we go. Secutari Peltasts. They, their weapons are pretty much the same as before. Um, their point levels are 10 points for Hoplites, 9 points for Peltasts, uh, basically. So 10 points, 9 points. Nothing crazy. Yeah, that's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I assume you've looked at the Dreadnoughts already. Yes, Bridges won. But if you want, you can... I've got a few more minutes that I'm doing a couple of one-offs. So if you want me to take a look at something, I can. Uh, let's take a look at the Reaper. The, the, I'm assuming you're, you're talking the Drukari Reaper, right? Um, mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Reaper, 170 points, 10 wounds... Uh, it's being blast gained minus one AP. The the weapon lost the kill you when you can't advance, and the beam is the same except it's now D three plus three damage. So minimum of four damage with dark techno monster. Minimum of five damage, which is amazing. Uh, no changes are welcome, says Sean. Yeah, they seem pretty straightforward. Um, Rugby Stew, thank you. I appreciate the shout-out. Thunderhawk, is it playable? Uh, 
Sure. <laughs> if you want it. Like, it's... I don't think it's... Thunderhold gunship, you know, is really big. 30 wounds. Does lots of guns. Um, it flies. And it's 800 points. So, maybe, you know, if you wanted to, to play it. Um, Tiberius, the Red Wake, please, from... Um, Tiberius, the Red Wake. Yes, yes. Tiberius, the Red Wake. Um, so, Tiberius, the Red Wake is... I should probably keep it on the points values here. Tiberius, he's 160 points. He has... Minus 4, plus 2 strength, 2 damage, lightning claws. Basically, but he has six attacks. They're not like because he just reroll wound rolls. He is a chapter master. He has rights of battle as well, so reroll once to hit, and he can pick a unit to reroll all hits. He is teleport strike, and he has while a friendly Carcaridon core or character unit within six inches. Each time a unit makes a melee attack, add plus one to strength. So plus one strength aura of core and character units within six inches. Other than that, he's a six wounded Terminator. Chapter Master with Lightning Close. Cool. Any chance you go over the Chaos Decimator? Lost two wounds. Hmm, fair enough. Whoa, Raven Guy. Holy moly. Thanks a lot for the gifted subs. That's fantastic. That's amazing. Uh, what are the stats points looking for the Stomper? Do you mean like the Custom Stomper? According to the Blue Oyster Cult, you should fear them. Sure. Well, what's the update to the Relic, Contemptor, and Re De Leviathan? Uh, so all the Relic words are lost. But um, so I'll quickly... So I've got a few more minutes here. So I'll go over the Chaos in a second. I'll finish for the, the Space Marines here. So Leviathan, Dreadnought, Contemptor, Dreadnought, Daredeo, Dreadnought. First and foremost, they all hit on threes now. First and foremost. The Leviathan, Dreadnought is... Toughness 7 now, and only has a 5-up save. However, with... And the Storm Cannons are only 8 shots. Strength 7, minus 1, 2 damage. Biggest thing there is that all the Dreadnoughts did gain the minus 1 damage, just built into their stats, which is huge. And the Levy Dread is 240 points, or 255 points, in the standard, like, Storm Cannon with the, the, the 300 killer missiles. So that's the biggest change is the fact that they, they don't hit on twos anymore. A lot of these Relic Contemptors and Leviathans and stuff like that have a, a rule called Martial Legacy instead of the Relic rule. So if you, for each one you include in a detachment, the detachment costs an additional command point. So if you wanted a Levy Dread in your battalion, the battalion cost is four command points for the battalion, right? So you're basically paying command points to put them in your lists, basically. Valerie, I'm sneaking here, finally played off. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, buddy. That's how it works. Sneaking around and stuff like that is super fun. Um, mm -mm -mm. Okay, let's go over the chaos thing real quick. We'll go over the chaos decimator. Astrum the tarum sheet. Oh, you wanted to go over the... Sorry, sorry. You wanted to go over the... Um, you wanted to go over... There was one of the things... Rapier Carrier. There you go. Is that the Space Marine Rapier Carrier? Yep. Sorry, I just remembered you wanted me to go over that real quick. Sorry, I've been doing this for four hours. Four, well, almost four and a half hours now. Click the like button for that marathon video. Holy moly. I hope you've uh, been enjoying it so far, because I definitely have been enjoying it as well. Another big thing, Scorpiuses did lose their shoot twice. So Rapier Carriers are... Rape your carrier, 85 points, just stock with the heavy bolter. With the quad, the laser, they're an extra 35 points with the quad launcher. So they are 120 points each if you want to run them with like their normal stuff. The Graviton Cannon is D6, rank 6, 36, 2 damage or 3 damage, basically. Laser Destroy is 3 shots, strength 10, minus 4, D3 plus 3 damage. Uh, the quad heavy bolter is just a 12 shot heavy bolter. And the quad launcher has. The Scatter Shells, which are 3 damage, Strength 8, minus 2. Or the Thunderfire Shells, which are Strength 4, no AP, 4, D3 at 60 inches. Right? So, yeah. So if you want to do the Quad Launcher, uh, or that, it's 120 points each. So it's a little little heavy. Uh, the Relic Dreads are your main detachment, your Warlord. Are they free? 
Is there a limit per detachment? There doesn't seem to be a limit per detachment, and I'm pretty sure the battalion detachment has a specific thing where your warlord just refunds you three CP, I think. Or it might refund you the whole the whole CP. So um yeah, it just makes the, the detachment cost more, basically. Happy Halloween, Sharonan. Thanks a lot, buddy. Really appreciate it. Uh, above and beyond for the marathon, mate. Thanks, Aurelius. Really appreciate the shout-out. Um, okay. <clears throat> so, orc cannon wagon. Okay, so we'll go for the orcs now. So I'm going to do... The orcs are going to be the last ones that I do here because orcs... By the way, if you get a chance, re-watch this. And I'll tell you right now that the um, that the uh, the chaos greater demons are stupidly good. Holy crap, are they good? Also, Tyranids, the the Tyranid like scythe hierodules and barb are heavy support now. Just so you know, those are the things that like popped into my like popped into my head more than anything was like all the stuff that's like really weird and whatnot. It's like, holy crapperonies. You know what I mean? Like, holy moly. Ho holy, holy moly. Okay. So, mm -mm. Warboss on a bike. Ah, uh, pretty standard stuff. Nothing crazy. He just gets the speed wall, which is the Death Killer War Trike one. So he doesn't do it to infantry. I think he just does it to vehicles and bikes. So he's not like an everything one anymore. Um, orcs, there we go. Uh, you wanted to look at... Right. The Custom Stomper is 800 points. Okay, so 800 points for the Custom Stomper. 40 wounds. Uh, doesn't have a belly gun, but you can give it a belly gun for an extra 50 points. And you can give it a Stompy Claw for 20. So it can go up to 870 points. It uh, transports capacity, unless you give it the belly gun, then it doesn't. But the belly gun is 2 damage, 3d6 shots. The Gaze of Mork is 3 shots straight, 6 damage, strength 12 minus 4. Uh, then you got the custom super rockets, which are heavy D6, D6 shots, strength 8 minus 3. The super lifter dropper, which is heavy 4 D3s, and it basically is like the, the, the artillery. You have to basically roll 3 D6, and you have to roll greater than the toughness of the attack, and then you wound, and it does 3 D, D3 plus 3 damage. The stomper claw, by the way, 9 damage. In addition to, if you roll a 4 plus 2 wound, D3 mortal wounds. So 9 damage plus D3 mortal wounds if you roll a 4 plus 2 wound. That's nuts. So it's it's pretty killy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least that's what I think. Points for the Crawford Titans. Uh, yeah, sure, absolutely. Is there a limit? Uh, have a great weekend, no problem. Thank you. Ooh, Raven Guy, thank you so much for the bits donations. Really appreciate it uh, as well. I Thank you so much. Uh, aren't they keywords now? What's keywords? What, Evan? Which one are keywords? I don't know which one you're talking to. And you wanted me to look at the DACA gun? The cannon wagon. Cannon wagon! Blah, 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 blah. So the cannon wagon is 170 points. It is not ramshackle. Most of the stuff in the orc book, book got ramshackle. Um... And it uh, shoots its super cannon, which is heavy 2d6, strength 8, minus 2, 3 damage blast, with grots. So it hits on fours, which I think is really cool. Yeah. And it has Daka Daka, and it's open topped and can carry six, six models, basically. I can get behind the minimum 5 damage Reaper, but I had hoped the deny advance would be buffed to include charges, not taken out. Yeah, no problem, Jason. I really like the Tantalus going down to 310 points is crazy. What does Ramshackle do? So when you take a, a thing that has most like damage, uh, you roll a d6, and on a 6, the damage of that attack goes down to 1 damage. Believe me, I've been on the, the, I've been on the receiving end of that. It's crazy. So, Titans. The Cobra is 450. The Phantom, 3000. The Revenant is 1500. I might use a Revenant now because uh, I can actually put a detachment in with a Revenant. Plus, the Revenant gained the Craftool keyword, which is a huge deal. Huge, huge deal. Scorpion is 500, and Staff Axe Wraith Knight is 325, basically. Plus uh, 65 each, so yeah, so it's actually like 470 or something. Etc., etc. 
Okay, folks, that is that. Thank you so much for hanging out on this super marathon of a video. If you haven't clicked that like button, make sure you click that like button. If you haven't already and you'd like to support the content I do, I have a Patreon that is for anybody, not just Drukari. And uh, it's like from three bucks to... As much as you want to give me per month so I can keep on doing this content. I try and keep my content as free and as open as possible to everyone. I do, do, I do some extra behind-the-scenes stuff and extra content for Patreons like Meta Mondays and things like that. And if you'd like to support the channel, the links should be in the description down below. Thanks a lot for liking, sharing, subscribing, and hanging out watching this video for as long as you needed to watch this video Four, really, really appreciate it, uh, everybody. You are amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out. I am going to now say goodbye because I need food and drink and a toilet break. And other than that, I have been Scary, your grateful host, and this has been your pre-release weekend special. Signing off until next time. Scary out. Bye, everybody. And that is the end of the stream. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. I will see you on the next stream. Join us on Twitch every single day of the week at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I do a live hobby stream, where we hang out and paint and do hobby stuff. Uh, usually not on Mondays unless I'm filming. But other than that, thanks a lot, everybody. Bye!